2023 is different y'all like 2023 is bringing a whole different energy like she is a new year a new bitch like all of it but hey there cutie and welcome to your 2023 horoscope in this video we are getting all up in the tea on your 2023 baby <laughs> so yes welcome to your 2023 horoscope be prepared for a juicy year ahead this year is very different than 2022 boo so the timestamps are down below this video is for your ascendant also known as your rising sign that is the sign you want to listen to that is the sign that's going to resonate most make sure to also send this to your friends send this to your family send this to your mom okay your mom needs to know what's coming in 2023 she just needs to know send this to your best friend girl she needs to know post this on facebook share this on instagram like get the word out that we are doing 2023 horoscopes, okay? You're not gonna wanna miss this. And with that being said, if you are seeing this before New Year's Day, I am running a huge sale right now for 22% off personal readings for anything that your little heart desires. So you can book with the link down below if you're interested. I also have a Patreon where you can learn astrology and get exclusive content for me. Check the link down below. And with that all being said, let's go ahead and get into these horoscopes bill. Alrighty, Aries, let's do this. <laughs> Basically, Aries, this year for you is about fuck bitches get money, honestly. <laughs> I'm gonna put a chart on the screen so you can see what the F I am even talking about. But basically, this is the chart for your 2023. I hope I have not been saying 2022 already this whole time, but this is 2023. Okay, so this is your chart for 2023. Basically, these are going to be where most of the big planets and transits are for your year ahead. This is a big mother effing year if you are an Aries rising. Okay, some shit is about to drastically change in your life. 2022 has been a massive year to do with finances, to do with your values, to do with your resources, your income, what you're worth and what are things worth to you, right? It's been a massive year of hiring your standards in terms of what you have in your life of value, okay? And your resources, what you need, what you own or what owns you, you know? It's been a very transformative year. And, you know, you've had a lot going on in the last few years now when it comes to your career, your goals, your aspirations, social groups, marketing, networking, things like that. And so it could have felt at times like the heaviness of the world was bestowed upon you, you know? But as we move into 2023, Aries, this is the T. We have Saturn moving into Pisces in your 12th house. So this tells me that 2023 from March onward for you is going to be a lot about healing seclusion and letting things go yeah like, and i know you've probably already experienced some of that in 2022 but you're going to be really getting serious about healing there may also be situations that come up that really pull you out of your normal day-to-day -day life your normal day-to-day -day routine there may be things that come up to do with self-sabotaging behaviors it's like you've gotten a taste of it in 2022 but in 2023 is where you implement those things that you learned where you implement the goals that you've kind of set the visions that have kind of been born to do with healing to do with seclusion to do with maybe even getting away and you know secluding yourself more maybe moving away maybe traveling to faraway lands maybe getting out of your normal day-to-day -day life in some way like where has your normal day-to-day -day life gotten kind of boring kind of stagnant this is the time where you are really going to be visiting topics such as spirituality, healing, escapism, seclusion, self-sabotaging behaviors, and ways that you may go against your own self that lead to your own self undoing. And it's going to be a time of you getting really serious about these things. Now, on the flip side of this, on the downside of this, you could say... With Saturn in your 12th, you could also kind of experience certain situations that get brought up that make you feel trapped. Certain things that get brought up that almost kind of pull you out of your day-to-day -day re reality. There could be a situation that comes up that requires your responsibility. Like it's something you're responsible for and you have to almost 
stop doing what you were doing before to be able to deal with this thing. So there could be a responsibility, so to say, like a karmic responsibility that you have to do, that you have to have, that kind of pulls you out of your day-to-day -day life in some way. So this could be definitely a time where you are, you are dealing with a lot of karmic shit, a lot of karmic cycles. Like Saturn in your 12th is really going to make sure that you are breaking these karmic cycles for good, that you are ending these karmic cycles for good and letting go of things in the past that are still haunting you letting go and and allowing yourself to heal okay that is really going to be saturn in the 12th it's going to be very very serious in terms of your healing and in terms of taking care of yourself in terms of taking care of the parts of your life that are unseen or subconscious okay so the next really big thing that's happening is jupiter is moving into your second so not only has 2022 been a massive year about finances and income and resources and your values, like I was saying before, but Jupiter moving into your second house in Taurus is going to also really get this area of life on and popping, basically. So Jupiter moves into Taurus in May, May 17th, and will stay in Taurus for the rest of 2023. So from May 17th onward, there's going to be massive growth and expansion in terms of your money, in terms of your income, in terms of your finances, in terms of what you own. Like this is going to be a time where you're wanting to accumulate more, where you're wanting to have assets, things of value, where you're wanting to own things that are actually bringing worth, that are actually bringing value to your life. This is that kind of time. Okay. So you're going to be experiencing uh, a lot of growth, a lot of opportunity when it comes to income. This could be a pay raise, a pay increase for some of you. This could be like, you know, having more stable sense of income. Like you're going to be really seeing a bigger vision for your money, for your income and for stability with money and with income and things that actually bring value and worth into your life and will last. Okay. So you're also going to be probably you know, having beauty and pleasurable experiences and things like that on your mind a lot more than usual, you know, because Taurus is about those things. And so Jupiter and Taurus in your second house, like you're going to be wanting to have pleasurable experiences. Those kinds of things are going to be of value to you in 2023. So the next big thing is that, and this is like the biggest thing of all for you, Aries, is that the North Node and the South Node are moving into your sign and your opposite sign of Libra. So the North node will be in your sign. The South node will be in the sign of Libra. What does this mean? <laughs> the North node being in your sign means that you are going to feel a lot more driven that from like July 17th onward, which is when the nodes switch, you are going to be way more focused on you. A lot of the karmic lessons, a lot of the energy is going to be pushing being pushed towards you yourself your identity what you want what you desire your authenticity like your appearance your health your lifestyle how you present yourself your personality like all of these things are going to be coming to the surface so from like halfway through 2023 you are going to be very very self-focused like way more than usual okay and the south node is going to be in your seventh house of relationships. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a massive push towards you and what you desire and what you want, while there's also a massive decrease, a massive letting go of certain relationships, relationship dynamics, the way in which you go about relationships. If you've been compromising too much in relationships or your partner has been compromising too much, if they've been unbalanced, if you haven't been speaking up, if your partner hasn't been speaking up, if, if it's been way too much of we or codependent in your relationships and not enough of I, that will start to show from you know, middle of 2023 until the end of 2023. Like there is going to be a massive purging, so to say, a massive karmic shift in terms of your relationships and the kinds of relationships that you want to be in, the kind of commitments that you have with people, the contracts that you're in, the close people in your life. It's going to definitely be a time where there are a lot of, you know, karmic things coming up with that. But this is all happening to get you to focus more on you, to for you to get back into your energy, your identity, what you want, and not be so diplomatic or overly considerate 
when it comes to relationships and others. And so the focus is really, really pushing you back to yourself, basically. So if you are watching this ahead of time or you come back to this in 2023, just remember that, you know, 2023, once we get to like July, um, if you are feeling like, you know, there's a lot going on in your relationships that does not make sense, just remember this energy is pushing you to embrace who you really are, to be unapologetically yourself, to do more for yourself. And so this is what that's referring to. We also have Venus going retrograde in Leo, July 22nd. This is the last transit I'm going to talk about with this. So Venus retrograde in Leo is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, dating, children, creativity, pleasure. So July, the start of July is going to be a pretty big month for you in terms of relationships, your love life, your dating life. You're going to be rethinking a lot of things, rethinking the dynamics within, you know, your partnerships or the people you're dating. You're going to be, you know, like children, the topic of children could come up. Also, in general, just your creative projects, your passions, where your heart truly lies with things. This could also be something that comes up, but you're really going to be rethinking some things and you're really going to have a massive focus on relationships uh, from July to August to September, possibly even like just the rest of the year, you know, but especially like july to like september you're really going to be kind of rethinking things in terms of your relationships with other people in terms of your dating life your sex life etc so those are some things that you're really going to notice then so overall areas i feel like it's going to be likely a pretty big year in terms of money and income a lot of doors are going to open you're going to be able to gain and grow a lot in that area and then you're also going to be doing a lot of self-reflection a lot of maybe wanting to get away or spend more time with yourself or you know maybe there are certain situations that take you out of your ordinary life that cause you to spend time away spend more time with yourself um and then towards like you know, halfway through the year to the end of the year, there's going to be a large focus on relationships and really rethinking things in terms of relationships. In terms of also like Pluto is going to dip into Aquarius March 23rd for until like May something. And that's your 11th house. So this could be a lot of massive transformation in terms of your aspirations, your goals, the people that you hang out with and are associated with, you know, how you network, things like this. So uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be a pretty big year for you if you're in Aries rising with the North Node entering your first and the South Node being in your seventh. There's going to be just a large push towards you finding yourself and doing what you feel you need to do and doing what's right for you. Like the name of the game this year is getting your own shit in order, self-reflecting and letting go of the people, the relationships and the things in your life that no longer serve you. So basically Aries this year for you is about fuck bitches, get money, honestly. <laughs> Let me know down below Aries if you could see some of these things happening for you in the year of 2023. I would love to hear your feedback and we are going to move on to the next time. What is going on Taurus rising? Welcome to your 2023 horoscope for the year ahead. So Taurus, this year for you, you are going to experience a lot of growth and expansion in terms of your identity, who you are, your life, what you feel like your purpose is, and where you feel good about yourself, honestly. Like this is going to be a radical year for you for evolving, growing, and self-fulfillment. It's going to be a radical time, a revolutionary time for redefining who you are, especially in terms of the world. The reason that I'm saying that is because Jupiter is going to be in your sign from May 17th until the rest of 2023. And so you are going to be having Jupiter and Uranus in your first house. So this is going to be a massive time of growing and evolving in terms of who you are and redefining who you are. Like you've already been kind of in this phase of redefining yourself for the last few years and redefining your appearance, who you are in the world and all of that. But this is going to be a radical shift that's going to like just blow up even more because Jupiter expands everything. So if you thought you were redefining yourself the last few years, 2023 from like, you know, May onward is going to be the year you are really redefining yourself on a massive, massive scale on a really big level. This year looks like it's going to be a lot about 
you doing you, you know, like you honestly doing you, you not putting up with shit in terms of your job, your career, your work anymore. Saturn is moving out of your 10th house where it has been for the last like three years. And Saturn's moving into your 11th house, March 7th. So for the last three years before 2023, you've had a lot going on in terms of your identity, your self-expression, how you see yourself, how you appear versus your career versus, you know, where, what you want to do in the world, your reputation, authority figures. And so you've likely had this kind of ongoing battle between who you want to be and who you are and trying to redefine yourself and stick out and be authentic to yourself versus what's going on in the world, what's going on on a larger scale, your career, authority figures, your reputation, your future, your long-term goals. And so your career life and your future have, have likely felt very heavy, very serious for quite a while now. And so that's going to be changing in March of 2023 when Saturn moves out of your 10th house and into your 11th house of your social network, friends, communities, your aspirations, and things that you want to do in terms of groups of people and connections with people and things like that. So it will get possibly a little bit difficult in terms of your connections with other people, in terms of, you know, marketing, networking, friend groups, you know, getting along with others like getting to know different people it may be a time where it may feel harder for you to connect with other people out there but it is going to be a time where you are very very self-focused and another reason i see that is because the north node is moving into your 12th house of aries so it's moving out of your sign where it's been for 2022 and into your 12th house in uh july 2023. So halfway through the year, the North Node is still going to be in your sign. It's still going to be all about you and your expansion, your evolution, your growth. But then in July, it's going to move into your 12th house. And so this is going to be a time where you may start suddenly feeling like it's time to get away. It's time to do your own thing. Like you start maybe detaching from a lot of situations in your life. You start maybe wanting to be more secluded. You start wanting to go within. Maybe you start wanting to heal. Maybe you start wanting to go on, you know, trips that are kind of like out far away, you know, far away lands, things like that. It, it could be also a time where certain ways in which you, you know, kind of self-sabotage are revealed. And it could also be a time where you're wanting to just like get away, you know, like you're wanting to just relax. You're wanting to just do your own thing, do things that you want to do for you, like follow your desires, even if they have nothing to do with your current day to day life at the moment. And that's where the South Node is going to come in. The South Node is going to be in your sixth house of Libra, where you are kind of seeing a lot of karmic things come up and letting go of a lot in terms of compromising too much in your day to day life and your relationships with coworkers, employees, you know, things like that in your day-to-day -day life and where that may feel, you know, unbalanced and where you may be compromising too much of your time, too much of your energy for the sake of work and your day-to-day -day routines and your day-to-day -day life. And so this may be a time where you're like, you know what, screw this. I'm out. I want to go my own way. I want to do my own thing. I want to go travel. I want to go on vacation. I want to go you know, do whatever it is that you want to do that kind of takes you out of your ordinary life in some way. So it looks like a massive year for, for growth in terms of your identity, in terms of, you know, being your authentic self, like just unleashing yourself, having like, you know, these radical upgrades and identity and who you are and your appearance and, you know, your body and like wanting to do more. I will say this with Jupiter in your sign, you do want to watch, you know, uh, things in terms of overindulgence because that is definitely something you could notice in 2023 coming up. So other than that though, Pluto is going to enter your 10th house March 23rd until like mid-May or something. So for a few months, you're going to briefly get a taste of what's to come in the following years with Pluto entering your 10th house of Aquarius. So this could definitely be a time from March to May that brings in a really new energy of like massive power dynamics and transformation in terms of your career, your long-term goals, where you're going in the world, uh, your future, things like this. It could definitely be a time where you are seeing things or things are coming to the surface uh, from you know the depths in some way. So these could be some things that you're noticing with Pluto in your 10th for those few months from March to May. 
So the other big thing that we have this year is Venus is going to go retrograde in the sign of Leo. Now this is your fourth house. So from like July 22nd for until like, I think it's like, October, September, or October, you are going to be really, really reflecting on your home, family, foundation, you know, your internal world. So again, this also is like another transit kind of leading you to go within, like leading you to be more internal, leading you to, to kind of focus inward. And so there seems to be like a massive push for you to focus on you and to go inward. And that's also being highlighted by Saturn going into your 11th. So at first it may feel like, you know, from March uh, 7th onward, it may feel like friends, social acquaintances, social dynamics, your aspirations, like they may start to feel heavy or just unwanted or like too much responsibility. Like you're looking for something that's lighter, something that's more freeing in 2023. And it's like going to be a massive time of going inward and letting go of situations that, especially social situations, that just are not aligned with you anymore or that feel like too heavy, too burdensome, uh, where you feel like you're compromising too much of yourself, you know, to go about your day to day life or to keep up with a health routine or to keep up with other people or to fit in with clients, like whatever it is, it's like you're trying to escape that and go more towards where you're going to feel a sense of purpose and desire and feel more driven and passionate in terms of what you want in your life. And so I feel like that is what I really see for you coming this year in 2023, Taurus. Let me know down below if this makes sense, if you could definitely see these things happening. Uh, I would love to hear your feedback and we are going to move on to the next one. What is up, Gemini Risings? This is your 2023 year ahead horoscope. So I feel like for you, Gemini, 2022 was a lot about having big dreams, doing a lot of healing, doing a lot of reflecting, going within and seeing beyond, you know, like seeing beyond your current day-to-day -day life, your current day-to-day -day circumstances and leaning into something that is more stable, more fulfilling in the long haul, and also really seeing what it is that you want for your life and your future in terms of your goals, your career, your reputation, etc. All of those things were really big for you in 2022. So as we are moving into 2023, I really see here that all of those big dreams, all of those future visions, the future goals are really going to play a massive role, especially starting March 7th and until the rest of the year, once Saturn moves into your 10th house. This is going to be a time where you are really solidifying those big dreams, those big visions, those big goals that maybe came to you or that you maybe had thought of in 2022. So this is going to be a time where you are really getting serious about your career, your career, your life goals, your future, all of that's going to have a more serious tone to it as you begin to really venture out into solidifying these long-term goals that you have of what you want to achieve in your life, what you want to achieve in the world. This could also be a time where you start kind of realizing, oh, I'm not getting any younger. It's time to grow up. Or if I really want what I want for my future, if I really want my dreams to happen, then I need to be doing something about them. I need to be actually putting in the effort. I need to be getting serious here. We also have another big thing is Jupiter moving into your 12th house from your 11th house in May 2023. So the first few months with Jupiter in your 11th house are going to really be about growing in terms of your connections, networking, marketing, you know, dealing with other people, groups of people, your aspirations, you know, it could feel like you are getting a lot of things back from for what the, the things that you've put in, right? But then once Jupiter moves into your 12th house in May, there's going to be a lot of growth and expansion again in terms of healing, going within, kind of secluding yourself maybe a little bit more, doing things more behind the scenes to create a more stable and secure way in your life um, and really maybe letting go of a lot, you know, like you've been really radically letting go, accepting, surrendering a lot in terms of things that have felt chaotic or out of your control with the south node moving through Scorpio in your sixth house. So 
if things have felt very chaotic in terms of your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day task, your day-to-day -day responsibilities, your day-to-day -day work, you know, your duties, your health, if things feel chaotic there, you know, the nodes have been pushing you to, you know, find a more stable and secure way by really taking care of maybe your mental health, taking care of things subconsciously, taking care of things behind the scenes, giving yourself rest, giving yourself breaks, you know, things like this, healing, you know, spirituality, things like that, maybe taking a vacation, going on a retreat, Jupiter is going to amplify this energy even more. So it's going to be even more about healing, even more about rest, even more about finding comfort, you know, with subconscious patterns and, you know, dealing with more stability and harmony in terms of your behind the scenes life, things that maybe you've neglected or ignored, you know, because solidifying those things will equally help your day-to-day -day life, your duties, your responsibilities, your tasks, your work, your health be less chaotic. So I feel like that is kind of something you're moving into even more in 2023 by May 17th. So the next really big thing that we have is the nodes will be moving into your 11th house and your 5th house halfway through the year, July 17th. So this is going to be a massive massive shift for everybody. Uh, but for you, Gemini, it's going to be very much about your connections again, your social connections, your aspirations, what you gain and receive from other people in, in the world, right? Like this is like a time where, you know, like the 11th house can be a house of gains, like a house of knowing different people and gaining different things from different people. And so your focus is really going to be on your aspirations, friends, your social life, and the different cliques and groups of people, communities of people that you may belong to, while the south node is going to move into your fifth house of Libra. So this is going to be a time where you are dealing with possibly some karmic situations in terms of dating, children, love, sex, creation, passion, things like this could be coming up where it's like, I know the south node through the fifth house for me was like letting go a lot of old karmic ways of having fun, but I have Sag in my fifth house, so I'm someone that can take fun a little bit too far at times and have in the past. So for you with Libra being your fifth house, this definitely can, you know, speak to dating situations with other people where you overly considering other people and not considering yourself and your own goals and your own desires and your own wants and you know things like that like where are you not doing you in terms of what you want to do with your life what you want to do with your aspirations what you want to do in the world what you want to do in terms of the people that you surround yourself with where are you kind of overly considering you know, like being overly considerate and not considerate of yourself enough, especially in terms of children, romance, dating, sexuality, and things like that. So these are some things that you definitely could see coming up in 2023 as a Gemini rising. Now we also have Pluto moving into Aquarius briefly from like March 23rd until like mid-May. So this is going to show you a brief preview of Pluto moving into Aquarius, which is your ninth house of higher education, foreign travel, politics, religion, outlooks, belief systems, you know, worldly views, things like this. So this could be a kind of a time that brings in power dynamics and transformation briefly in this area. So you may notice a lot more about the power dynamics in the world and things that you didn't see before in terms of how you view the world and your outlook and your belief systems and things like this. So definitely watch out for that around that time in 2023. So other than that, we have Venus retrograding in Leo July 22nd for a few months. So this retrograde for you, Gemini, is going to be a lot about speaking. <laughs> speaking, your day-to-day -day environment, your day-to-day -day things that you do, your siblings, neighbors, relatives, Things like this could also come up with this Venus retrograde. But I think more than anything, you're going to be really reflecting on how you express yourself. I think you're going to be really reflecting on maybe your skills, maybe your passions, maybe, you know, how you speak, how you come across, how you communicate, how you want to come across, how you how you want to communicate. This can be a time where you're reflecting on your desires, your creativity, the things that you want to do, the, the different, you know things that you want to partake in, like any hobbies, any courses, any 
anything that you want to learn. Like this Venus retrograde is going to be very much, I think, connected to your creative self-expression in a lot of ways on a day-to-day -day basis and your environments and the people that the people and relationships in which you surround yourself with. So this definitely could be a time with the South Node in your fifth too, where you are kind of seeing karmic or toxic situations, you know, around July and for a few months after uh, surrounding dating, your love life, the people that you meet, your location, your environment, uh, you know, just different people that you have in your life that you may be having fun with. But this could be a time where you're reflecting on those things for whatever reason. So I think it's going to be like a very outward year for you but it's also going to take you very inward and it's going to have you wanting to kind of remove yourself or withdraw to a certain extent to enjoy your life and enjoy yourself and like enjoy the be the better things in life like the things in life that are actually worth something and valuable to you so that is what i see for you for 2023 gemini let me know down below if this resonated and if you could see these different things happening in your life i would really love to know and i would appreciate your feedback please share this with your friends and family if this helped you and you would like to let them know what's coming in their 2023 and i will see you in my next video Alrighty, Cancer Risings. I honestly love the look of 2023 for you guys. This year looks like you are stepping up and being the CEO, the boss. You are not fucking around in 2023. Like, I love this energy for you guys. So, first we're going to start with Saturn moving into your ninth house in Pisces. And this is going to happen on March 7th. So, this is going to be a time from March until the rest of the year where you are really getting serious about your belief systems, your outlooks on life, your political views, your religious views, your worldly views, higher education, foreign travel, you know, education in general, you know, mentorship, coaching, anything that really like expands your viewpoint, expands your mind, expands your outlook on life, you know, is really going to be kind of serious in 2023. Like you're going to be taking more of a serious approach and really solidifying your viewpoints and solidifying your belief systems and what you want in terms of higher education, educating yourself, you know, where you want to go in life, the direction that you want to go to get to your goals, right? Whether that be education, a learning pursuit, whatever it may be, like expanding your belief systems. So this is going to be a time where your belief systems are going to be under kind of like a serious reflection over the next few years with Saturn in your ninth. And you're going to be getting very serious about your education and serious about, you know, the things that you want to do to expand your viewpoints and outlooks on life. Now, this could be a time, I will say, that you do want to be a little bit more careful in terms of legalities and legal situations with Saturn in your ninth, okay? Because the ninth house does rule legalities and legal situations and courts and things like that. So you do want to be a little bit careful in regards to those things because you could take some hits there with Saturn in the ninth. Like Saturn can bring consequence and can bring hardship or challenges. And so you do want to be careful in terms of legalities, basically, like I said, because you could, you know, if you go to try to sue someone, let's say like, you know, with Saturn in your ninth, it may not work out the way you think it's going to, or there could, it could be very difficult or it could go on for a long time, you know, something like that. Like it just, it just be careful with legalities in general. Okay. I'm just trying to give you a heads up, but other than that, <laughs> we have Jupiter moving into your 11th house of Taurus in May. And this is a very expansive and growth oriented transit. So Jupiter being in your 11th is really going to bring in a lot of increase in terms of your aspirations, especially anything involving other people, groups of people, networking. It's really going to be a time where you're growing in terms of the people that you're knowing, the people that are, you know, giving back to you or connecting you or part of your network in any way. You know, the 11th house is also a house of gain. So this could be a very fortunate time for you where you're gaining a lot of different connections. You're gaining a lot of different things, um, maybe professional connections or things like that in terms of your life. Like it could feel like a very lucky time in terms of your aspirations and just doors opening in general. So on top of that, we also have the nodes changing signs in 2023, and they are going to be changing to Aries and Libra in July, like July 17th. So a little over halfway through the year, we're going to have a major shift in the direction that we are kind of headed in. And for you, that direction is going to shift 
to your career, your professional life, your future, you know, adulthood, growing up, you know, authority figures, and really your long-term goals and achievements. You know, you're really going to be starting to look at your life differently, starting to look at what you want for your long-term differently. And it's going to be way more about what you want and your individual goals, your individual future, your individual path. And the South Node is going to be in your fourth house, which means there's going to be somewhat of a decrease or some karmic situations that come up in terms of family and home life. And, you know, maybe there's going to be this kind of situation or a set of situations that come up where you see how you are kind of sacrificing your own desires, your own self, your own identity for the sake of peace or harmony in your family or at home, you know? So it's like you're trying to kind of be the middleman or the peacemaker or keep, you know, two different sides balanced in terms of your home life, in terms of your past, in terms of your family. But this energy is really pushing you to go after what you desire, to go after what you want in your worldly achievements and what you want in your life, what you want with your long-term goals and kind of get away from that peacemaking energy in the family and in the home life. And so this year is going to be where you really step up in terms of your independence, in terms of, you know, owning your own sense of authority, your own sense of autonomy, your own sense of sovereignty in the world and with your life and with where you're going in the future. I know I just got out of the North Node or I'm getting out of the North Node moving through my 10th house in 2023. And it has been an amazing year of like massive professional growth and realizations and just seeing glimpses of my future that and what I can do and what's possible. And I feel like you're going to get a lot of that as well as a Cancer rising um, after July 2023. So you're really going to have these insights into your future, into where you're going in life, into where like your direction and what you want for you. Like this isn't about what other people think, what your family is going to think, you know, what the people from your past are going to think or where you come from or whatever. This is about going after what you want, like taking life by the horns, right? Aries in your 10th house, like taking life in the horn by the horns, stepping into your professional life, like stepping into your reputation and really, you know, making maybe making big moves, you know? So this could also bring up for Cancer Risings, like a sense of where you may be trying to prove yourself in life or your family or you may be trying to prove yourself in terms of what you do with your career or your worldly achievements. And so some of this could be kind of facing some of that or letting go of some of that or letting go of past relationships or old relationship dynamics in terms of your family and with your past in some way. So that's something else that you could notice. So another thing happening in 2023 is Pluto is going to briefly enter Aquarius, which is your eighth house from March until May. And so briefly, you're going to have this kind of taste of Pluto in your eighth. And, and this is also really kind of adding to that external future focused year that you're really having here, Cancer, because, you know, Aquarius is kind of a more future focused sign. And when we have Pluto moving into Aquarius in your eighth house, there's going to be a lot coming up in terms of major life shifts that really change your outlook and that really um, transform you where you're getting maybe more serious and resourceful about power, uh, your inner power and power dynamics within your life. You're getting more serious and resourceful about finances and, you know, what you own and wealth and building wealth and things like that. So you could see some of those things coming up briefly from March until May 2023 as well. And the last main transit that we have for 2023 is Venus retrograding in Leo. That's going to happen on July 22nd. Venus is going to retrograde in the sign of Leo, which is your second house. So for a few months after July 22nd, you're going to be really reflecting on your income, your assets, your value, the things that you own, the things that bring you worth and value, your money, uh, anything that's yours that brings you a sense of security and safety, your priorities as well. These are going to be some things that you're really reflecting on for a few months after July 22nd. And also, you know, with it being Venus, this could be your relationship to money, your relationship to what you own, your relationship to your income, what you value, your relationships with other people regarding those things as well. And uh, also how what you own or your money or your income is somehow maybe tied to your family because at that point the south node will be in libra in your fourth house and venus rules libra 
and it rules your 11th house. And so it's like you're really reflecting on what certain connections in your life actually give you and what you actually receive from them or what you actually give to them, you know, like what you own and what you give, right? And so these are some things that could really be coming up around that time. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer. Let me know down below if this if you feel like this will resonate for 2023, if this was helpful for you, don't forget to share this with your friends, your family. I would really appreciate it. And check out my description below if you would like more from me. And with that being said, we're going to move on to the next one. Alrighty, fabulous Leo, my fellow Leo Risings. This is for us. This horoscope is for us, you beautiful badass. Let's get into it. 2023 is a lot different than 2022. There are some themes in you know, areas of life that will continue to grow and be a focus for 2023, but there are other things that are changing in 2023. So 2022 for us, it was so much about our future, where we see ourselves going, our path, our career, our reputation, our professional life, authority figures, like literally our, our goals, our achievements, what we want to achieve in life and where the fuck we are actually going while also letting go of the past, right? Letting go of the skeletons in our closet, facing things from the past, facing chaotic family dynamics, family situations, facing chaotic past situations that are messy, you know, that it's like we have really been seeing in 2022 where our foundation has felt very chaotic and unstable and we've been really wanting to find balance between our personal lives and our professional lives and where we want to go in the world, where our goals are, what we want to do with our life versus our chaotic family life and, you know, home life, living situation, things like that. So we've been addressing like a, a massive duality here with these two areas of life, like professional and external world versus personal internal world and really securing our foundation. You know, we've also had a ton of lessons in terms of money and finances, investments, and where we want to grow and evolve in terms of money and finances and the things that we own and what we want to do in the world with those things. And so that has been a massive part of 2022. We've also been learning lessons in terms of relationships, like what we really want in relationships for the long term. And those lessons have been going on for like the last couple years now, like longer than just 2022, since like 2020, we've had Saturn in our seventh house really teaching us to grow up and mature in terms of relationships, other people, the people that we surround ourselves with, the commitments that we make, our boundaries with other people. You know, we've been thinking long-term and we've been a lot more future focused in terms of relationships. I know I've grown up a shit ton and matured in terms of relationships and I've had to really look at what do I want for the long term, what's going to make me happy, what's not going to make me happy. You know, I've had to set boundaries. I've had to get, I've had to get very, very, you know, I've had to learn a lot of lessons, karmic lessons, you know, lessons, adulting lessons when it comes to relationships. So if your relationship life has been tough the last few years, this is likely why, but that is changing in 2023 boo we start off 2023 in march with saturn moving out of our seventh house of relationships and into our eighth house of investments finances things like this so we've already been learning lessons with the eighth house in 2022 like i said with finances investments building wealth you know abundance and how to go about our lives in terms of the wealth we want to build and also the opportunities that are out there in terms of exchange transactional situations and relationships business etc so with saturn now moving into our eighth house this is going to solidify the lessons that we've learned in 2022 now this isn't all like rainbows and roses and whatever right like i'm not gonna lie to you saturn in the eighth house can be a very life-changing period it can be a period that takes us deeper that takes us you know into our our in our inner power that brings up lessons to do with our inner power to do with power dynamics and it can also bring up lessons in terms of investments finances money you know so we're going to be getting very very serious about building wealth business finances investments and any kind of financial relationships or situations in our lives any kind of exchange in our lives any kind of transactional exchanges in our lives this could be loans credit debt you know anything like that anything financial and anything that's like 
you know, I'm giving you this and you're giving me this, anything that's owed to you versus what you owe to other people is going to be a massive, massive deal that you're going to be getting very serious about in 2023. And like I said, we've already been learning about this with Jupiter moving through our eighth. So we already got like a taste of, you know, some of the things that could come up. But Saturn in the eighth is a very different flavor. It's going to have us get very serious about these things. And so this is important because, you know, we've been through this, this deep transformational shift in 2022 with Jupiter moving through our eighth house. Saturn is moving in there to really solidify that shift, right? So we've learned a lot and we've grown a lot. You know, the eighth house is a, is a time of massive life changes. Like I know for me, like the start of 2022, I was a completely different person than I am ending 2022. Like it's my life does not even resemble what it did in the beginning of this year. So let me know down below if you're Leo rising and you've been feeling that way too. Like I'm literally like ending 2022 and I'm like looking around and I'm like, I don't recognize hardly anything, not even myself, hardly, you know, like, and it's been, it's been a little crazy, you know, it's been a little cray cray, but I mean, everything that I did were, was, you know, I, I did things that I wanted. I manifested things that I wanted like crazy in 2022, but now I'm just kind of like, after all of it, I'm like, whoa, where am I at? You know, where do I go from here? So it's been a very life-changing time. It's, it's really altered my perception and altered what I was like my outlook on my life and where like what's next and where I'm going etc like 2022 has been a life-changing year I feel like for a lot of Leo risings and that energy is going to continue um not to say that you know I mean it may be a different life change but I think for most Leo risings it's going to be that same change that first started in 2022 but we're going to be solidifying it like things are going to get clear we're going to get serious and it's going to be like okay this is what I need to do like we're going to start actually having a plan and getting more structured with our dreams, with our goals, with our finances, with the wealth and the financial, you know, freedom or stability that we want to have within our lives. And so that's going to be a huge, huge focus in 2023 after March. Okay. So the next big thing is that Pluto is going to briefly dip into Aquarius from like March to May in 2023. And this is again, our seventh house of relationships. <laughs> Not looking forward to that one, honestly. Um, it will be an intense time or an intense period of relationships that's going to continue for several years once Pluto officially moves into Aquarius, which I believe is next year in 2024. Four. It could retrograde back into Capricorn. I'm not sure. I don't remember right this second, but um, this is just a taste in 2023. Okay. So Pluto moving into Aquarius from March till May is going to be just a taste. It's going to show us like, you know, we're going to be getting uh, very deep and a lot more like, what's the word I'm looking for? We're, we're going to be a lot less superficial in terms of relationships and we're going to be wanting depth. We're going to be wanting someone that we feel, you know, people that we feel very, very deeply about and very, very deeply connected to. It could also bring a lot of change, a lot of transformation in terms of our relationships. We could also find that we're in a lot of business partnerships, business relationships as well. That could be something else that Pluto kind of brings up, but it's going to be a, a pretty big change that's coming that we're going to get a small preview for in 2023 in terms of our relationship sector, okay? We're also going to be possibly seeing the shadow side of some of our relationships or what's kind of going on beneath the surface in some relationships. And, you know, this is going to be about, you know, like letting go of maybe toxic old you know, self-sabotaging behaviors and relationships as well that can be very destructive, letting go of destructive relationships, things like that could come up as well. So the next thing that I want to talk about for Leo Risings is Jupiter is going to be in our ninth house, the first part of 2023. So we've already had a preview of this in 2022. Jupiter was in our ninth house, I believe from like April or May until like you know, the end of October, 2022. So think back to that time period, what was coming up in your life. Jupiter is going to be back into Aries, the first part of 2023 until May. So from January until May with Jupiter in the ninth, we may see a lot of evolution and growth, a lot of opportunity or a lot of change. And, um, you know, kind of this growing change in terms of our perspective on life, our outlook on the world, where we're going. Um, you know, we could see a lot of themes coming up around 
foreign travel, education, mentorship, coaching, um, teaching, education, you know, things like this. It's going to be a time where we're like really learning a lot of lessons, right? We're really learning a lot of lessons in terms of where we want to go, in terms of defining ourselves in the world and within, you know, with our purpose and what feels purposeful to us and what we want to share with the world versus you know, how we want to be helped by the world, like our outlook and views on the world is going to change significantly and very drastically with Jupiter moving through the ninth house. And this is just kind of um, also a preview somewhat because then the node is going to move in the ninth house later in 2023, but we'll get to that in a minute. So next, Jupiter is going to then move into our 10th house in Taurus, um, May 17th. And this is going to be massive for Leo Risings for career. So this is going to be like a lot of growth, a lot of evolution, a lot of opportunity, a lot of getting very, very clear about your direction in life, your career, your professional life, what you want to do in the world, your path in life, what feels destined, like where you're going in life, what you want to achieve in life, your future, right? Like, so if this has been kind of confusing, if you haven't been quite seeing things clearly in the first part of 2023 you're going to be learning lessons then once jupiter enters taurus in may 2023 then those lessons are going to be like you're going to be sharing those lessons with the world in some way you're going to be applying them to your career you're going to be applying them to your direction in life you're going to be applying them to what you want to achieve in the world you're going to be applying them to you know your professional life your reputation whatever right like so this is going to be a really interesting time for our career our destiny if anything like that has felt confusing if you've been confused about your purpose where you're going or the direction you're supposed to be going in um you know like your future all of that like that is going to really become clear in 2023 for a lot of leo risings like we've already gotten tons of hints we've already gotten tons of you know maybe visions or epiphanies or whatever in 2022 but in 2023 i feel like that's going to become very very clear at least i am manifesting it for us because damn it i need it you know like i need it so but there's going to be like a revolutionary bomb that goes off for leo risings with career like this is going to be like I'm growing, I'm unstoppable, I am revolutionizing something like Uranus is still in our 10th house. So we are getting very authentic, we are getting very radical, we are, you know, like spilling the tea, we are, you know, standing in our truth, like standing in freedom and liberation, and we are going to be rocking shit with career, I really feel like, for a lot of Leo Risings, at least, you know, after May, um, at some points in 2023, at least at some points, you're going to be growing and finding opportunity, etc. in career. Now, the other thing though with this is that the North Node will be moving into our ninth house and the South Node will be moving into our third house. So this is going to be an interesting one and I'm really interested to see how this plays out for us as Leo rising. So I feel like just my interpretation as an astrologer, I have not like been an astrologer and went through this this exact nodal shift yet because the last time it happened was 18 years ago and I was not an astrologer then so I wasn't like paying attention but so it'll be interesting to like you know actually witness this like while I'm aware right so I really feel like the nodes moving into our third and ninth this is a really cool place for the nodes but it is very much about moving in a new direction in terms of our outlooks on the world our belief systems you know worrying more about who we are and ourselves and doing what's best for us instead of worrying so much about like over being overly considerate um compromising too much in our day-to-day -day reality with our day-to-day -day here and now things our day-to-day -day environment so this could be a time where instead of you know maybe hanging out with friends every weekend or constantly going here there and everywhere around your city or around your town to run errands or do tasks you're now like, you know what, I want to travel the world and I want to do it by myself, you know, like, or I'm going to go like start, you know, learning something new and I'm going to go do it by myself. It's like we're craving this adventure and these experiences that give us a new outlook and new belief systems and new views on our lives and on life in general and like our what feels purposeful, like we're exploring our faith, we're exploring what we believe and like we're getting very clear on that. And, you know, we're kind of getting out of the mental day to day back and forth and we're kind of going for something bigger, right? And so there's going to be a lot of themes coming up though from July because this is going to happen in July, this shift 
from July onward, there's going to be a lot of different things coming up with education, learning, teaching, mentorship. Like we are going to be on like going on like a lot of Leo Risings may find themselves on a new path in new careers or like somewhat switching what you do for work or career. Like a lot of Leo Risings may find themselves being coaches or mentors or teachers or educators or, you know, something like that where you're like, sharing a message or spreading a message for a higher purpose, right? And because you believe in something bigger than yourself. So I really feel like that could be very, very huge for Leo Risings in 2023. And then the next thing that we have here is Venus going retrograde in the first house in our sign in Leo. And that is going to start July 22nd. She's going to be in Leo for a few months because of her retrograde. So this is going to be a massive time where we are really, really reflecting, reconsidering, and just kind of like really going within and taking a look at who we are, what about us do we like? We could also be changing our appearance. We could be like kind of reflecting on our lifestyle, reflecting on how we're coming off, reflecting on who we are, our identity, and you know, what we actually like, what actually brings us a sense of pleasure and joy and how we can maybe upgrade those things, you know, because Venus going retrograde in our sign is going to square, you know, Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus in our 10th house. So this may be a time where you're flying high with career, but there may be something that kind of pulls you back because maybe you realize like, wait, this isn't all the way me or I'm not all the way being authentic here or something is changing about my identity and I need to kind of, you know, or you might be feeling some like imposter syndrome, you know? Or you're flying high with your life goals and what you're doing in the world and, you know, whatever it is that you're going after. But then it's like, okay, if I want to upgrade, if I want to get here, I have to maybe start changing some things about how I present myself into the world and who I am. And I have to get clear on that, right? And so that Venus retrograde is going to be a time of reflection on who we are, our identity, our appearance, our style, how we present ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis, our characteristics, our personality, and things like that. And also possibly, you know, our relationships and our day-to-day uh, connections and relationships and, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff that we have going on, like right here, right now, you know, like, so those are some of the things that we could definitely notice coming up for 2023. Some other things that you can notice as a Leo rising is some karmic or past things coming up in terms of siblings, cousins, you know, relatives. So that is what I am seeing for you, Leos. I hope this was helpful for you. Definitely let me know down below if it was, if you can feel like, if you can see a lot of these things happening. Like if you already kind of see the lead up or the build up to some of these things, I would really love to hear your feedback as always. But all in all, it looks like we're gonna be very outwardly focused. Like we're gonna be focused on the bigger picture, the bigger plan, our future, where we're going, our destiny, our path, like our bigger goals, what we want to achieve in the world. Like we're going to be focused on like worldly achievements. Cause like, as you can see with the chart, like so many of your planets, like so many of these transits are at the top of the chart, right? Like we have Saturn in the eighth with Neptune. We have the North node in the ninth. We have Jupiter and Uranus in the 10th. Like this is like a reinvention of your career, of who you are. Um, and then we have, we do have Venus retrograding in your first for a few months, you know, starting July 22nd. But, um, you know, other than that, like this is a very outwardly focused year and I feel like we need it. We've done so much internal work with the South Node being in our fourth. We've focused so much on like the private, personal, like deep shit, you know, uh, in 2022. So, you know, halfway through 2023, that really shifts. And so let me know down below if this resonated. I'd love to hear your feedback, Leo. Happy 2023. And I hope you guys are having a good time in the new year. Uh, if you would like anything more from me, check my description below. And and we are gonna move on. Virgo darlings, welcome to your 2023 horoscope for the year ahead. So for you, Virgo Risings, 2023 looks like it's going to be a lot about cleaning up your shit <laughs> in terms of your life, your relationships and finances and what gives you a sense of faith, meaning and purpose in your life and in the world. Like. This is a time where I feel like you are moving into 2023, maybe feeling a little exhausted from 2022 or a little burnt out from 2022. There could have been 
a lot of really big shifts in who you are and, you know, where you're going in your faith and your beliefs and your outlook and your views on life. And so you're going into 2023 with these new outlooks, with these new beliefs and things like that. But it's going to also be a time where you are getting very serious in terms of, you know, where you're going, what you want, what you need to do for you, but also you're getting very serious in relationships. Like relationships going to be a big, big deal for you in 2023 and for the next few years because Saturn is going to move into your seventh house of Pisces in March. Okay. So in March, 2023, Saturn's going to get out of your sixth house of Aquarius where it's been for the past like three years. So since like 2020, you've had this massive weight and, you know, a lot of responsibility, a lot of, you know, tough shit in terms of your day-to-day -day routines, your health, your lifestyle, your day-to-day -day task, you know, like I know when Saturn went through my sixth house, I was like, at first it was great. I was getting so much shit done for like the first year. I was like, yes, this is badass. And then like the like last year or two, I was just so freaking exhausted, like, all the time. I was just so tired, like, and I couldn't figure it out. Like, I wanted to work. I was so passionate about doing these videos and all of that, but I was just so tired. I was so exhausted, and I didn't know why. It's like, no matter how much sleep I got, I just could not find the motivation to, like, do the things that I actually wanted to do. Like, I would just kind of sit around all day because I had, like, no energy, and it just, I couldn't, like, regain it. It was, like, so annoying. So, if you are Virgo rising and you're feeling a little bit exhausted, you're feeling just physically kind of burnt out or mentally kind of burnt out from Saturn moving through your six the last three years, there will be a really positive shift with Saturn moving through your seventh, the beginning of March March 7th, 2023. So, but the focus will shift to relationships and Saturn will be opposing your ascendant as well. You know, if you're a Virgo ascendant, especially if it's in like the first 10 degrees of Virgo, um, you will feel that this year, starting this year, because Saturn is a planet that deals with maturity, growing up, adulting, responsibility, you know, structure, really like boundaries, um, mortality, things like this. So Saturn moving into your seventh is going to bring those things into your relationships, your commitments. And so it's going to be a time where you are solidifying your relationships, your connections, where you are solidifying your commitments, where you get, are getting serious and growing up with your relationships. I know I just, I've been going through Saturn in my seventh, the last few years. And for me, it's been about really like maturing in relationships and thinking more long-term, thinking more practical about like, is this going to work? Is this not like, is this long-term like, can this be long term? And also seeing my boundaries with other people has been another really big theme for me personally with Saturn moving in um, through my seventh. And also with Saturn opposing your ascendant, this could also bring up the realization of mortality, like the realization of like growing up adulting, you know, you could start feeling like like it's time, like it's, it's time for you to start doing the things that you want to do in your life. And, um, you know, you could start getting very serious about maturing, very serious about growing up. Or at first it could feel like, Ooh, I don't want to do this. Like, I know for me, that's how it was. Saturn opposing my ascendant was like, you know, I want to hurry up and like live what's left of my youth and enjoy it, you know, at first. And I was kind of like freaking out. And I started like, you know, like the reality of aging started really kicking in and hitting me. And so, and then from there, I, you know, finally kind of accepted it though. And now I'm like, you know, I feel like so much more mature, so much more so solid within myself. And so that may happen to you too as a Virgo rising, no matter what age you are, you know, it could just be a very kind of massive reality check of like where you're at in your life, where you want to go, who you are, your identity, your personality and your relationships, you know? And so the next three years from March, 2023 on are going to be you know, a lot of massive lessons. Um, sometimes they could be difficult in terms of relationships. It could really show you where maybe you haven't seen things clearly, where you haven't seen other people clearly, maybe where you've been too naive with other people, or where maybe you've not really taken accountability or responsibility for your own part in relationships, or where other people aren't doing that with you. And it may end up being a turnoff for you, you know? Like, I know that's kind of how it was with me. Like, when I started maturing in my relationships with Saturn moving through my seventh, I was kind of like, 
You know, like if I'm going to be doing all this growing, all this maturing, then I expect other people in my life to be doing that too. Like, because that's what's now like kind of actually attractive to me. Like, and you know, so with Saturn moving through your seventh, you could find that you are more attracted to someone that is willing to own their shit, that is willing to take responsibility, that is willing to, you know, like commit instead of run away or, you know, be childish about something, you know? And so that's going to be really, really huge for you in 2023 Virgo. So on top of that, you could also notice with Saturn in your seventh, something else I noticed was somewhat of like this distance or this coldness in relationships as well. Like if you're already in a committed relationship, your partner could get kind of distant or you could get kind of distant. Um, like, and it may not necessarily be like on purpose, but it could just be like, you know, like Saturn, <laughs> like they have a lot of going on or they're like overwhelmed with something or they may be going through a difficult time. And so you may have to like kind of try to be there for them, you know, but this could also bring up serious lifelong big questions about like, can I see myself with this person? Is this a lifelong partner? Like, would we work long term? Are they willing to step up and and put their, you know, put their energy into this as much as I am? Are they willing to commit to growing and changing and evolving as much as I am? Or are they just stuck? Are they just, you know, are they too overwhelmed with their feelings? Are they too overwhelmed with other things? You know, I would say with your seventh house Pisces as well, this could be maybe that you have certain relationships in your life that are um, somehow involved in escapism, or maybe you use a relationship for escapism or something. So those are some things you could also see. Maybe not everybody, but some people could notice that with Pisces being your seventh and Neptune being there too. So the next big thing is Pluto is going to briefly check into your sixth house and then check right back out like a couple months later. So from March 23rd until like mid-May, Pluto is going to go into your sixth house of your health, work, and day-to-day -day routines. And so you are going to get like a little bit of a preview, a little bit of a taste of what's going to come for like the next couple decades um, after 2023. Uh, like it's only going to be a small preview of like a couple months. But when Pluto moves back into Aquarius for good, it's going to stay there for like years and years, like a couple decades, you know. So, so you're getting a small taste of that from March to May. Um, and this could bring up some transformative more deep and less superficial experiences in terms of your work, your day-to-day -day life, your work life, your work tasks, your health, your lifestyle, and things like that. So uh, just kind of be on the lookout for that. So the next really big thing that's happening in 2023 is that Jupiter will start in your eighth house of finances, money, investments, business, transactional situations and relationships, money that you owe or money that's owed to you, inheritance, you know, anything financial or, you know, to do with resources that involves other people in any way, shape or form is your eighth house. Um, and also just, you know, like finances that you may even have, but what do you do with those finances, right? Like that's your eighth house basically. So Jupiter is going to be there for the first few months until May 17th, um, where you're going to see a lot of opportunity the first few months, a lot of doors opening in terms of finances. You're going to be getting a lot clearer on your direction and what you need to do for you regarding your finances, your investments, business. Like, you know, there could be something that comes up where it's like, it's time to take action on something. It's time to, to act independently on something that is financial for you, that is going to bring in more growth, evolution, and opportunity for you, okay? With Jupiter moving through your eighth house those first few months. But then Jupiter is going to then move into your ninth house of higher education, higher learning, um, your faith, your beliefs, travel, things like this. So this is gonna be a massive time where you start really waking up to a new outlook, okay? Because Jupiter moving through your eighth, I went through that in 2022 for a lot of 2022. It's gonna be a life-changing time where it's like you may not be 100% the same person afterwards. Um, you may look at the world completely different, which is why the ninth house comes after the eighth because it's like it gives us a whole different view on the world. It gives us a new sense of faith or a new set of belief systems, a new perspective, you know? Um, and the ninth house involves things that do that, like travel, which involves seeing other cultures and, you know, different, different 
places that can really open up our our view with jupiter moving through the ninth this will also bring a lot of luck and uh fulfillment in terms of legal matters as well so if that's something else that comes up in 2023 you should have a lot of you know like opportunity there for you so yeah i feel like you're going to be really focused on getting your finances straight if they have been an issue you're going to be focused on opportunities with finances with business with investments with whatever it is that you can do to grow or build your wealth and what you want to obtain for your life and moving forward and you're also going to go through a massive transformation on how you see the world and what you want, your path, your faith, etc., your perspective on life. So this could be a whole new worldview. This could be a whole new, like something that you learn, like a whole new philosophy or something like that, a whole new theory that you uncover that really like wakes you up and revolutionizes your life because Uranus is going to be in your your ninth house as well. So starting from May 17th, Jupiter is going to move into your ninth and you're going to just really be waking up to like a whole new worldview, the whole new, whole new way of looking at the world and really integrating those eighth house lessons that you learned in the beginning of the year. So the other really big thing for you, Virgo, is that the North Node is moving into Aries, your eighth house, and the South Node is moving into Libra, your second house, on July 17th of 2023. So a little over halfway through 2023, we're going to have a massive direction shift where, you know, you've been kind of focused on your worldviews, on the way that you kind of see things in the world and you know, you're like what what gives you a sense of purpose and meaning and faith in life um, and kind of getting out of chaotic, you know, all over the place, messy day to day environments and day to day shit, basically. And once the nodes move um, into your second and eighth, there's going to be a massive, massive shift in your direction where you're going to be really, really focused on what you have to do for you in terms of money and finances, what you have to do for you in terms of your investments, what you have to do for you in terms of getting your finances straight. Okay. Because with the South Node and Libra in your second, like you may have income, but that income either involves another person somehow, or it may not be all the way balanced in some way. It may not be all the way fair in some way with the South Node in the second. So there's going to be a lot of karmic lessons coming up with relationships and your money and your assets and your resources. <clears throat> and the North Node in the eighth in Aries, you know, Aries is a very individual focused, like sovereign, independent sign. And so with it being in your eighth of other people's money, it's like, you almost have to figure out what you need to do for you, like what investments you need to make for you, how to get very like smart and clear about an independent with your money um, and with how you build wealth, even if that involves other people, like it has to benefit you first, right? Um, instead of just like sharing is caring, here, have this, here, have that, you know, whatever. Like, it's like you have to build, start building your wealth and get a hold of your finances for you and like do it for you. Like it has to benefit you first and you have to do it independently. Like you need to be the one in charge, right? And so there's like, you could have gotten glimpses of certain things that you could do with finances or how to build wealth or something like that in 2022 or in the beginning of 2023, but it's going to really start going in that direction after July, 2023. Like it's, you're going to be really, really financially focused. You're going to notice a lot of themes coming up with money, finances, income, resources, all of that. So Anyway, last but not least, the other big thing we have in 2023 is Venus going retrograde. And this is going to happen in your 12th house in Leo. So this is going to happen on July 22nd. So around that time, maybe like a month before and then a couple months after, you're going to be feeling this Venus retrograde energy of Venus, you know, kind of having you reflect on terms of what you hide from the world basically. The things that you don't want to show other people, the things that you've kind of buried, the subconscious things that you don't want to deal with. Um, it also, like it could be private or secretive things as well. This could be relationships behind the scenes or subconscious things in terms of relationships. You know, maybe there's something going on that is secretive involving another person or a relationship or a romance or love or something like that. Uh, with Venus and Leo. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying that could be the case. It may not seem likely right this second, but 
around this time, it could very well be likely. But even if it's not something shady, um, it could even just be like things that you've repressed or old patterns, old karmic patterns to do with relationships and to do with things that like you, like me, like I said before, like things that you may hide about yourself, like things that are actually like that you're actually really good at or that are actually like a talent or something like that. But maybe you hide them, you know, like maybe you hide them. Maybe you don't show them to other people. Um, so it's going to be a time where you could find yourself kind of withdrawing from your normal day to day work and activities and all of that to kind of, you know, go inward or reflect on something like go on vacation, go on a retreat or something like that. Um, but it could also as well be that there are self-sabotaging patterns that come up in terms of relationships. That could be another possibility. So anyway, so yeah, Virgo, that is what I'm seeing for you guys for 2023. And uh, I really feel like, like I said, this is a year where you're getting very, very independent. Like you're, you're really going to be pushed to get very independent regarding your money, your finances, your resources, business investments. Um, you're going to start taking relationships and contracts, commitments, and, you know, business partnerships, etc., a lot more seriously. And you're going to be learning a lot of lessons there and like maturing there. And you're also going to be like under the influence of a massive, 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 new worldview um or new idea new new kind of faith like a new religion uh, like a new like some kind of big new belief system or massive revelation massive awakening to looking at the world in a new way is also likely going to happen for you in 2023 so uh let me know down below if you could see these things happening if it feels like 2022 has been building up to some of these things i would really love to hear your feedback virgo make sure that you send this to your friends and your family it would really really help me out post it on social media share it with the world to see and if you would like to book a reading with me everything you need to know is down in the description below i love you guys and we're gonna move on to the next sign my lovely libran risings this is for you you. let's talk 2023 like holy shit this is a big year for you like you guys are definitely a massive player in this year ahead or just you know libra placements in general libra as a sign is a massive player for the year ahead but again this is going to resonate most if you're libra rising but you could notice some of these things if you're a libra sun or moon and i only say that because of a certain transit because of the south node moving into libra a little over halfway through 2023 um but let's get into it basically. Okay. So overall Libra, this year is going to be a that massive, massive year for you. Um, the first part of this year, it may not seem like that, like so much. Um, but the second part of this year is where everything's going to shift when the nodes move into your sign and your opposite sign of Aries. And we're going to get to that in a minute, but overall, what I really see for you this year, Libra is a lot of like a lot of focus on relationships and other people but having independence and autonomy and sovereignty in those relationships while also building wealth building stability for yourself financial freedom like really breaking out of old patterns in terms of money and finances and also a, a massive massive serious shift towards your work, your job, your day-to-day -day routines and your health and the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and how you get structured on a day-to-day -day basis. And I feel like this is going to be somewhat of like a social year as well for Libra rising. So let's go ahead and get into the base or the, the details here. So the first thing is Saturn is going to move into Pisces on March 7th, 2023, where it's going to stay for like the next three years. So hopefully you guys cannot hear that train, but you probably can. It, it's like literally right there. I can't, I can't get rid of it. So we're just going to keep, keep it moving. But um, yeah, so Saturn's going to move into your sixth house of your day-to-day -day work, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, your lifestyle, and your responsibilities with work on a day-to-day -day basis, your job employees co-workers anything that to do with your job anything to do with like tasks that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis which is why it rules work and you know health like maintenance for your health and things like that so this can be a time where you get very serious about these things or something kind of pushes you to get serious about these things like you maybe like have to start like having like a lot of commitments for some reason you have a lot going on with your schedule 
um, your workload increases. You know, you have to get very disciplined with your with your work because you may start noticing that maybe you're just free flowing, you're all over the place. You know, 2022 brought a lot of lessons with this with this area of life as well, work, health, daily routines, and tasks. Uh, because Jupiter moved through Pisces like the first you know, four, four to five months of 2022. So you probably felt a lot of opportunity and growth there, but Saturn is now moving into Pisces in March, 2023 to really solidify a lot of those bigger lessons that you were learning in this area and to make sure that you're doing it right. <laughs> okay. So this is a time where you may feel like, okay, if I want my dreams to come true, I have to like complete these goals. I have to structure this. I have to get on schedule. I have to make these appointments. I have to, you know, like Saturn in the sixth can be rough. Um, at times it can really show us where we feel kind of stuck or trapped in our day-to-day -day lives, um, with day-to-day -day things that we have to do, or the responsibility of those day-to-day -day things can increase or feel heavier in some ways. I know that's kind of how it was for me when Saturn moved through my six a couple years ago. So it may not be like that for you though, because you do have Pisces as your sixth house and Neptune's going to be there. So it's going to have this like dreamy, like, you know, flowy, fluid, uh, imaginative, creative vibe, but it's also going to be like, okay, like how can we get serious about what we're doing here? How can we get serious about work or how can we get serious about the things that we need to accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis and the tasks that need to be done? How can we get serious about our health, our lifestyle, right? Like how can we, you know, like if, if, you know, especially this could be like, if you've been, uh, getting into something that involves like escapism on like a day-to-day -day basis. This may be a time where that ends or has to come through to an end. This may be a time where you're addressing a lot of your habits, you know, like habits that are no longer working for you. You know, this could be a time that really kind of like pushes you to face some bad habits that you may have that are working against you in some way. Uh, and to really, you know, maybe be healthier, change your diet, change your exercise routine, you know, like all of these types of things could really come up with Saturn entering your sixth. So you'll notice that from like March for the, like the rest of 2023 on and off, you know, as Saturn's moving through your six. So the next thing is that Jupiter will be moving through your seventh house and your eighth house. Okay, so the beginning of 2023, Jupiter will be in your seventh house of relationships and other people in your life. So you may notice that your significant other, your partner, you know, significant people in your life, people that you have commitments with or close connections with, contracts with, like there may be a lot of growth for them. There may be a lot of opportunity for them. Um, there could be a lot of growth in terms of your relationships in general and your connection with other people, your relationship dynamics. It may be a time where, you know, they are really self-focused, really moving forward with their goals and their vision and, you know, like their, their beliefs and learning something new or something like that. Um, and then though Jupiter will then move into your eighth house, May 17th, 2023. And this is going to be a shift because it is going to be a time where things start changing very quickly for you, Libra, where you may go through some big life changes that give you a new perspective on life that like really kind of almost alter the direction that you're going in at times as well. That could happen for a lot of you and where you really start focusing on long-term success, long-term growth and fulfillment with wealth, finances, money, assets, business, investments, etc. Like this is going to be about your long-term big growth, big shit that you want to do with money, finances, and investments. So, um, and this is going to be a time where you're wanting to break free of old things in terms of money, finances, and investments, and where you can experience like rapid major growth with money, finances, and investments, and business success. Like this could be an opportunity to pay off your debt. This could be an opportunity to buy a house. This could be an opportunity to start a business, you know, like anything transactional with money and anything like, like, your money is your second house. Like your money, your assets, what you own is your second house. The eighth house is like what you own with other people, what you share with other people and what you do with the money that you have, like what you invest it into, what you do with it, how you spend it, who you have transactional relationships with, you know, loans, debt, investments, the stock market, like all of these things would be like eighth house, right? Like where do you want, like what's your vision for your wealth? Like it's so much more than just having money, having resources, having income. It's like, what are you doing with that? Like, where is that going? How can you, how can you build on top of that? How can you grow even more? How can you, you know, like, it's like, you could get, 
you could really find yourself getting very smart and you may have already started doing some of this, but you could find yourself learning a lot and progressing a lot, getting very smart in terms of finances, resources, money, building wealth, you know, building something financial that's worth something, you know, that's going to change your life drastically in some way. And so I really see like these big themes for you if you're a Libra rising. So the next and possibly the biggest thing for you this year, Libra, is the south node is moving into your sign and the north node is moving into your opposite sign of Aries. And that's going to happen on July 17th, 2023. So a little over, like just a little bit over halfway through the year, the nodes are going to shift and the energy is going to shift drastically. Okay. So you've already been focusing on finance your money, your assets, like your income, your resources, your priorities versus other people's money, shared finances, shared resources, you know, like wealth in the long term, investments, business. Like I said, you've already been focusing on those subjects pretty massively and really like, you know, learning how to grow in abundance, learning how to be more fulfilled with money and resources and things like that, and not be so chaotic or self-sabotaging or messy in terms of money, resources, and your priorities, right? Like you've already been learning these lessons here, and you're going to continue to learn a lot of those lessons for the first half of 2023. But then once the nodes shift in July, a massive change is going to happen where the south node is going to be in your sign, your first house, if you're a Libra rising, which is what this horoscope is for, which means that there is going to be a lot of lessons coming up in terms of who you are, your identity, your appearance, like where you're going in life, what you want for your life, like you, like there is going to be a massive kind of shift in how you see yourself, how you relate to yourself, your relationship to yourself. And there's going to be a lot of shifts, like you could see a lot coming up in terms of where you compromise yourself too much for other people or where other people's opinions create so much of how you behave or how you act. You could also see where you're like way too overly considerate or where a lot of your personality is based off of other people in some way or based off of what other people may think in some way. So this could be a time where you're clearing out a lot of karmic shit to do with your identity, to do with your body, to do with how you see yourself, to do with how you view yourself, to do with your personality traits, you know, things like this. Now, on the other side of that, the North Node is going to be in your seventh house of Aries. And so this is interesting because your seventh house is the house of other people and Aries is the sign of independence and being self-focused. And so this is really like a massive lesson in basically being completely authentically independent and you inside of a relationship like not losing yourself to a relationship or letting the relationship become your identity or letting other people dictate who you are so much and like you just like freely being yourself being authentic to yourself being sovereign and independent in terms of your relationships like taking the lead um and if you're not doing this you could find that maybe people that you're in relationships with close people in your life, they start taking on that role. They start like being the leader. They start like, you know, doing their own thing, being more focused on them, etc. And if this happens, it's because it's mirroring what you need to be embracing. Okay. It's like, you need to be embracing that energy too. Like the, the seventh house and the first house are mirrors. And so, you know, if you're a Libra ascendant, your descendant's going to be in the seventh. So this is going to be a time where you're, you're really seeing yourself in a lot of different ways. You're seeing like, you're seeing yourself in other people and you're seeing what you're not embracing um, through those other people. Like those other people are mirroring what you should or could be embracing. That is kind of just a brief description on the nodes moving through yours and Aries signs. But that south node moving through your sign, it could feel like you are just completely shutting like an old, like old, like an old identity, you know, like you're just completely shutting like the way that you used to do everything because you are starting to realize that the way that you identified yourself, the way that you dressed, the way that you carried yourself, all of that may have been all just like basically you doing that because of other people in some way. Like it may have came from like other people, like it's, it's like other people have affected your identity in some way because you are considerate because you are you know like Libra is a relationship based sign you know like it deals with other people like you do compromise you know like and so this is going to be a time where you are kind of like almost going through like a chameleon phase where you're like kind of seeing like whoa like I'm like wearing so many different hats and this is not even who I am and like who am I and like so this may be a time where you really get to like 
like see like karmic lessons, karmic patterns in terms of your identity and get to like just be you, you know, like step back into you. The other big thing for you for 2023 Libra is that your ruling planet Venus is going to retrograde in 2023 and she's going to retrograde in the sign of Leo uh, on July 22nd. So from like June to like September, you're going to have this like period of time where your ruling planet Venus goes retrograde. So this is going to be a big deal because it's your chart ruler if you're a Libra rising. And so, and she's retrograding in your 11th house of your connections with other people, your acquaintances, friends, your social life, your aspirations, any kind of groups or like cliques that you belong to, any kind of like-minded groups that you're belong to. Um, it could be, you know, even social media groups or um, a course that you're in or a class that you're taking or a yoga class could be coming up. So there, this could be a time where you find yourself like in a lot of different, you know, pools of cliques or people with a lot of different like-minded people. But when Venus goes retrograde, this is going to be a time where you're really reflecting on who you surround yourself with, like the people that you want to be around, um, your also like your sense of creative expression in terms of other people. Huh, my camera died. I don't even remember where I was, but basically Venus is going to retrograde in your 11th house. So you're going to be really rethinking the kind of people you connect with, the groups you belong to, who you relate with, like if you're on the same page with other people. Um, there could be a lot of drama that comes up because you do have Venus retrograding in Leo in your 11th. So there could be like a lot of drama with different friend circles, different circles or cliques that you kind of connect with. And this could also be a time where you're kind of reflecting on your aspirations as well. And uh, where you could find, you know, where you could kind of go back to different people you were once connected with or different acquaintances um, as well could be kind of coming back from the past. So that is what I'm seeing this year for you, Libra. If you're a Libra rising, all in all, I feel like this is a year where you are really like, you know, doing a lot in terms of, you know, financial growth. And you are also very going to be very focused on relationships and your direction with your relationships, your social life, work and your day-to-day -day duties, your day-to-day -day lifestyle and, you know, getting very serious and buckling down there while also kind of shedding old layers of yourself that no longer are aligned with you or, or are just not really who you are anymore, right? So let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. It would really, really mean a lot to me. So please comment down below, send this to your friends, your family, share this on social media, help a sister out over here. I would really appreciate it. And then also if you would like to book a reading with me or get more from me, see my description down below. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, Scorpio darling, let's get into your 2023 year ahead horoscope. So your year ahead, Scorpio, looks like there's a massive, massive focus on relationships and your love life, dating, romance, children, while also a other, like a, a whole nother area of life being your work and your career, public image, reputation, etc. So these appear to be like the, the two really big themes for 2023, at least, you know, on and off throughout 2023. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we have happening, the first really big shift that we have coming in 2023 is Saturn moving into Pisces, which is your fifth house on March 7th. So Saturn has been in your fourth house for like the past three years now, okay? So you've been having a lot of hard, difficult, challenging lessons in terms of your family, your home life, your foundation, your living situation, your past, you know, things that feel very karmic, things that are very personal, things that are private, you know, like your private life and your family life and your living situation, like all of that has been very, very much challenged over the last several years with Saturn moving through your fourth house. You know, you've had to possibly take on a lot of responsibility, a lot of commitment, a lot of burdens possibly, or even release a lot of burdens in terms of your home life, your private life, your personal life, your family. That has been a huge, huge theme for you the past three years. But Saturn is now moving in, in March, into your fifth house of dating, romance, love, creativity, passion, and children. So this is a time where you could find that there could, this could be a few things. A few things could happen with this. You could kind of feel like, you know, the fun in your life gets a little bit more serious, or maybe there seems to be 
a lot more distance towards kind of fun and passion and play and things like that. So that could be part of it. Like maybe you get, you know, maybe you just have so much going on or, you know, like it kind of feels like it could kind of feel like the fun is kind of drained out of your life for a little bit with Saturn moving through your fifth the next few years, or it could feel like you get very serious about your passions, the things that you love to do. Uh, you get more serious in terms of your dating life, your sex life as well. This could bring up a lot more of like a serious, mature vibe around dating and sexuality. This could bring up certain lessons or difficulties as well with dating and sexuality. Um, I just have to tell you all of it, give you the no BST here, okay? I'm not gonna like sprinkle this because it's just, you can't, like it's Saturn, okay? It's a malefic planet, it's a difficult planet, it can bring difficult, challenging lessons. And so the fifth house, um, you know, this could also be like a lot more responsibility in terms of children, you know? Like if you don't have kids, this could definitely be a time where you are thinking about it, um, but it could also, you know, kids are a responsibility. They are, you know, they can be, um, it, it can, they can be a responsibility, right? Like they can be difficult. If you already have kids, this could be like, you know, maybe you take on more responsibility with your kids in some way, or maybe, you know, something like that. Like there's a lot more serious or maturing um, vibes there with that. Now, you know, because this is Pisces though, and you do have Neptune in your fifth as well, this is also about like your dreams and getting very like creative and dreamy with your passions but with Saturn there it could be getting very serious with your passions you know getting very serious with what you're giving your heart to you know like the fifth house is really where your heart goes you know like what what you're giving your heart to whether it's your children your passions your hobbies dating you know like this is a time where you could be stepping it up where you could be maturing or you could be learning a lot of lessons. And for some of you, they could be somewhat difficult lessons in terms of, you know, passions, dating, and sexuality. And so for some of you, you could find that like maybe your sex drive just all of a sudden go, goes down, or uh, maybe you're just not as interested in dating, or you're more interested in a long-term relationship, like you're ready to kind of, you know, mature in that way, you know? So it could be different for different ones of you, but it, there could be a lot of manifestations of this. So, um, but those are some that I would expect to see with Saturn moving through your fifth. So the other big thing here is that Pluto is going to briefly enter into Aquarius March 23rd until like May. And so this is just a small preview and Pluto is an outer planet. So its effects may not be like instant or seen right away. It spends decades usually in a sign that it will come back in Aquarius uh, after 2023 and spend decades here as well. But this is just a short preview from March till May uh, where Pluto moves into your fourth house of home, family, your living situation, your private life, your personal life, all of that again. And so this could be a time where there are changes here or where things where you do notice a certain depth or intensity kind of coming up, you know, um, but it's going to be a very short time, a very short preview. So do remember that. So the other big thing that we have happening this year is Jupiter is going to be in your sixth house and your seventh house from like January until May. Jupiter is going to be in your sixth house of your work, your job, your day to day task, your health, your lifestyle, your habits. So here you may notice that there's a lot of potential that starts to grow when it comes to your day to day routines. Like maybe you start taking on a lot more. Maybe you start getting back into exercising, kickboxing, or like taking more action in your day to day life because you're feeling motivated. So this could be a time where you're feeling very, very motivated in your day to day life to get things done in terms of your routines. You're seeing like the potential for what you want and how to do things in the day-to-day -to, -day to get there, right? So there could also be a lot of opportunity or potential that comes in in terms of your work or your work task. So that could be something as well uh, where you are having like a lot of opportunity to be independent and do something yourself with your day-to-day -day lifestyle, your day-to-day -day routines. So those are some of the ways that you could see that play out. But then in May, Jupiter is going to move into Taurus and spend the rest of the year there. So Jupiter in Taurus will be your seventh house sector. So this is going to be a really big deal for you, Scorpio. It's going to affect your relationships, your partner, your significant other, whoever you're in a relationship, whatever kind of close committed relationships that you have, whatever commitments, contracts, agreements that you have with other people, Jupiter moving into your seventh is going to really bring a lot of growth, expansion, opportunity in these areas. So 
you could kind of see this playing out with your partner or a significant other. Like it could seem like they all of a sudden have all this potential or all this luck or all these things going on and are learning all of these things or doing a lot of different things, you know, like, and so it could kind of play out in that way, but you could also see it where um, maybe you have a lot of, like you're seeing a lot of potential or a lot of growth within a partnership that you're already in, within a relationship that you're already in. So there could be a lot of different, you know, different things that comes up here. And Uranus is also going to be in your seventh still, and Jupiter is going to eventually meet Uranus in your seventh, which is going to bring really big radical shifts and changes in terms of your relationship. So this could be like up big upgrades in terms of your relationships or in terms of how you go about your relationships or your partner could be having this like just massive up leveling in their life in some way shape or form and so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out let me know if you have an idea how that might be playing out for you in 2023 down below so the next big thing that's happening in 2023 is the nodes are going to shift from your sign and your opposite sign of Taurus where they've been all of mainly all of 2022 and will be for the first half of 2023. So in 2022 and for the first half of 2023 still, there's been this focus on, you know, the south node being in your sign Scorpio. So you've been shedding and purging a lot of like old layers of you, old versions of you, like things that don't align with you anymore, shedding and purging a lot of your toxic traits, a lot of your messiness, you know, the things that you do that are very shadowy or dark or self-sabotaging or whatever that are very chaotic and that don't make sense you know and the north node has been in your seventh house of relationships and Taurus so you've had to really learn how to embrace like stability pleasure abundance security and just being comfortable and stable in relationships instead of needing to make things you know uh deep and dark and toxic or messy or chaotic in some way right like it's like it, you've been having to let go of like a lot of your old traits or a lot of traits that just no longer serve you anymore and learn how to be like just comfortable instead of in this like you know constantly turning over phase right like you've had to learn how to just be stable in relationships like how to have abundance in relationships and with other people and so you've been really learning a lot about that in 2022 and will continue learning a lot about that the first half of 2023 and then in july 2023 the nose will shift into aries and libra which is your sixth and twelfth house so the south node will move into your 12th house and the north node will move into your 6th house. So this is going to be about releasing a lot of old self-sabotaging patterns regarding relationships with other people. Self-sabotaging patterns to do with things that are going on behind the scenes that are kind of private or that you try to hide. You know, like Libra in your 12th house is kind of like a time where, you know, in the south node being there is kind of possibly going to bring up a lot of karmic cycles and patterns that need to be released or healed. Old habits that are self-defeating that really like kind of go against you that end up hurting you in the long run to do with possibly other people as well. And so this could be maybe you are seeing somebody, but it's like a secret. It's like, you know, like it's kind of shady a little bit, you know, like something like that. This could also just be, you know, just self-defeating patterns in general that go against you. You know, like it may not always have to do with another person, but any kind of like subconscious habits, you know, anything like that, that is like really kind of adding chaos in your day-to-day -day reality and in your life you're going to be like really reflecting on. It could be a time where you're really releasing a lot of things, healing a lot of things, letting a lot of things go, uh, especially in terms of relationships though because Libra is your 12th house and in terms of just other people in general. The North Node is going to be in your 6th house of Aries of your work, health, and day-to-day -day routines and tasks that you do on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. So the North Node being in Aries in your 6th house is going to be really pushing you to take charge, take ownership, take leadership in your day-to-day -day routines and with your day-to-day -day life, with the different tasks, errands, responsibilities, duties that you have on a day-to-day -day basis with your work, with your job, with coworkers. It could put you in like a, a leadership position at work or you could be managing something, you know. It's also going to be pushing you to be like a leader in terms of your health, your fitness, and your lifestyle, you know, and really focus on you and focus on what you need to do for you 
on a day-to-day -day basis and releasing bad habits and toxic patterns and things that are really like bringing you down or getting in, you way, in your way or that are like self-undoing, so to say. So that is going to be the nodal shift for you, Scorpio. And last but not least, we're going to have Venus retrograding in Leo in your 10th house of career, your future, your goals, your achievements, your reputation, your professional life, authority figures. So that's going to happen around July 22nd. So you could start noticing this, you know, like end of June till like September, you could start noticing some of these shifts with Venus retrograding in your 10th. So this could be a time where you're really reflecting on your career and what you love, what you like, what brings you passion, what brings you joy in terms of your job, your career, your position with your career, possibly authority figures, your reputation, your professional life. Like you could really be reflecting on these, these different things. Like it does your career bring you a sense of purpose? Do you like it? Does it bring you a sense of pleasure? How do you put yourself out there? How are you relating to other people? What relationships do you have in your career? What connections do you have in your career? Like all of those things you're going to be reflecting on during that time period of Venus being retrograde in your 10th house. With that being said, let me know. Sorry, I keep itching. I feel like I have like cat hair on my face and it's like bothering me, but <laughs> let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening for you in 2023 Scorpio. If a lot of these things make sense because of maybe something that you've already went through in 2022, or you could just see that you're kind of already building to some of these things. I would really, really love to know what you guys have to say down below. Also make sure to share this with your friends, your family on social media. It would help me out a lot. And then if you would like to book a reading or want more from me, check my description below and we are going to move on to the next sign. Alrighty, Sagittarius rising. 2023 for you it looks like it is going to be a year of intense focus on your passion, where your passion really truly lies, and what you want to do moving forward. Also, your work life, your day-to-day -day routines and health, and also a bit of family, home, personal, private life. So these are like the main themes that I see for you in 2023 so far. So let's break it down. Let's get into the details. So the first big transit that we have of 2023 starts in March. On March 7th, we will have Saturn leaving your third house of Aquarius where it's been for the last three years and moving into your fourth house of Pisces. So this is going to be a massive shift where you are really going to be feeling it because the fourth house is a very important house. It's an angular house. The fourth house really deals with your private sector, your private life, your personal life, your foundation, your roots, where you come from, your family, your past, your home life, your living situation. So Saturn moving into your fourth is going to possibly bring some lessons, challenges, or some responsibilities, duties, discipline, or difficulty to some degree to your fourth house sector. So once Saturn moves into your fourth on March 7th, you're really going to notice this pull to your home, family, personal life. Like there's going to be a, like something or things that start happening that feel like you are learning certain lessons here. They could be kind of karmic lessons. It could be lessons from the past, things coming back from the past. And you're really going to be solidifying and getting serious about your home life and securing your foundation uh, off of what you actually dream and desire, you know, because Neptune's also been in your fourth for a long time now. So you've been really, you know, trying to follow your dreams in terms of home, family, your living situation, your home, your personal life, all of these things. And so Saturn's coming in here to really solidify these things and to make sure that they're done in the correct way. So this could be a time where you could be like, you know, making your dreams of your home life or your family situation a reality, like getting serious about these things, maturing and growing up. Now, this could also be that you take on more responsibility in some way in the home family life and your personal life and your private life, things like that. So maybe you buy a house and you take on more responsibility because you, you know, bought the house or maybe you're building a house. So you take on more responsibility there, you know, so things like this, or maybe a family member comes to live with you. So you take on more responsibility there and, you know, it becomes a little bit more structured in some way. This could also, though, I can't lie to you, this could bring up some difficulty within your family dynamics or with family or some distance with family as well. So those are some other things that you're definitely going to be learning a lot in terms of your home life, your family, 
and maturing a lot and like kind of being forced to face certain things that maybe you hadn't before in your home life, in your private life, your personal life with your past, things like that. So the next big transit that we have for 2023 is Jupiter is going to move from Aries and into Taurus May 17th. So the first few months of 2023, Jupiter is going to be in Aries, which is your fifth house sector of love, romance, creativity, children, passion, joy. So you could be experiencing a lot of growth, evolution, fulfillment, like an abundance of joy and passion. And, you know, there could be a lot of growing and lessons that you're learning here in terms of what you want to do for you, in terms of children, in terms of, you know, what you love, like what you're passionate about, like what gets you going, what makes you feel alive. Like this could be kind of like igniting a flame within you to like go after the things that you desire and have fun while you're doing it and do the things that you want to do. It can also bring in some like impulsivity with those things as well the first few months, but then Jupiter will move into Taurus, your sixth house on May 17th of 2023. So when Jupiter moves into Taurus, your sixth house, this is going to be a time where you're going to notice a lot of growth and expansion. And you're going to be learning a lot in terms of your work, your day-to-day -day work life, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, your tasks, your duties, your health, how you keep up with your health, like any kind of maintenance that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be work, health, or you know, different chores or just things that you have to do, tasks and duties that you have to get done. So Jupiter here is going to expand and blow up this area of your life where you are really going to be maybe changing the way that you go about your routines. You know, um, you may be very busy with work. You may have a lot of opportunities with your work. You may have a lot of opportunities coming in in terms of your job and in terms of your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day responsibilities, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that could be something and Uranus is still going to be in your sixth house as well. So you're also like revolutionizing this area of your life. Um, you're also maybe focused on, you know, very Uranian things, maybe with work like liberation, revolution, you know, freedom, technology, you know, things like that could also be coming in. The other really big thing that we have happening in 2023 is the nodes are going to be changing from Taurus and Scorpio, which has been your sixth and 12th house. So, um, you know, you've been really learning in 2022 and you will continue to learn halfway through 2023. Uh, about how to let go and shed old baggage, old weight, old self-sabotaging behaviors, old habits, you know, like messy, chaotic patterns and habits and like things that you hide, things that are behind the scenes, things that you've neglected, like places where you've maybe escaped or whatever, like getting into these like toxic situations, like subconsciously, like these kind of like subconscious behaviors that are self-sabotaging and toxic. Like you've been really releasing a lot of those, you know, releasing a lot of things that were going on behind the scenes, like a lot of habits that just weren't aligned with you anymore or weren't good for you. And you've been moving towards more security, comfort, and stability in your day-to-day -day life with your health, with your work, with your day-to-day -day routines, you know? And so that's still gonna go on for the first part of 2023. But then once we get till to July 17th, the nodes are gonna move into Aries and Libra, which is your 11th house and your fifth house. You're going to notice a large focus shift towards Again, your uh, the area of life where you have fun, passion, children, sexuality, dating, love, romance. Like these are going to be the things that are you're really focused on. You're really being driven towards these things that fill you up, that make you feel alive. You know, like you're really going to be wanting more of a sense of independence and sovereignty in terms of create creativity and the things that you're passionate about. Like you're really going to be focused on where your heart is. Like. What does your heart want to do? Like, what makes you like, what makes you feel like a child again? Like, where can you play more? Where can you have more fun? Where can you laugh more? Like, those things are going to be very, very important after July 17th. But the South Node is going to be moving into your 11th house. So it's going to be less about what everybody else thinks. It's going to be less about what everybody else wants. It's going to be less about comparing yourself to everybody else, social media, friends, groups of people, connections, and all of that. Like, there, there could be a lot of letting go of all of that or a lot of like toxic patterns or old karmic patterns coming up with you know different groups and social environments that you belong to and you're gonna be kind of pushed to find like 
what does your heart want? Like, what do you truly deeply want inside for yourself and for your life? Like, where is your heart, right? Like, where's your passion? Where is the thing that ignites your soul that like just sets you on fire that gets you so like that gets you going, you know, like, where is that? And that is what you're going to be really starting to find the second half of 2023. You could notice more of a shift or focus towards children. You know, if you have children, or if you are wanting children, that could be something that comes up, you could be more like like noticing more of a shift towards fun and just having fun and doing things that are fun um being more adventurous things like that like you're really going to be tapping into that side and tapping out of the world and what the world wants and what society wants and what society expects of you and all of that it's like it's not what it's not about what everybody else is doing it's about what you're doing and what you want to do like what you actually desire to do so the last and final big transit that we have of 2023 that I'm going to talk about for you is Venus going retrograde in Leo, which is your ninth house sector. So this is going to be a time and this is going to happen on July 22nd when Venus actually goes retrograde, but you may start noticing this like end of June until like September, you're going to be maybe noticing some of these things. So you're going to be noticing that you are really reflecting on your beliefs, your faith, where you get out of your comfort zones, your visions, like your worldviews, your big worldly views, your belief systems, visions for the future, your visions for your life, like all of these like bigger life questions are going to be in play here. You also may be reflecting on educational pursuits. Are you going back to school? Do you want to go back to school? Like, and this makes a lot of sense too, with like the South Node, or I'm sorry, the North Node being in your fifth at the time too. It's like, you're finding things that you love, things that you're passionate about. So you also may be reflecting like, should I go learn further about this? Like, should I go back to school? Like, should I go to college? Should I take this course? Should I get a coach? Should I get a mentor? Like, should I start teaching myself? You know, like, should I do something educational? Should I travel? You know, like these kinds of things are really going to be coming up like in that Venus retrograde time period for you, Sag. So that is what I'm seeing for you for 2023. Let me know down below if you feel like this is going to resonate, if you can already see a lot of these things potentially happening for you, like if it's already been kind of building up to some of these things. I would love Love, love, love to hear your feedback. Make sure that you share this with your friends and family so they can get their horoscope for the year ahead. Share this on your socials. Also, if you would like more from me, if you would like a reading, if you would like exclusive content and to support me on Patreon, make sure to see the description below. I love you guys and have a wonderful new year. What is up Capricorn Risings, my darlings, and welcome to your 2023 year ahead horoscope. In a nutshell, I feel like 2023 for you is going to be a shift in focus towards your internal, personal, private life. And it's going to be a little bit less about your reputation, your career, being seen, your worldly achievements, what you're doing in the world, your path. Like it's going to be a little less about that and a little bit more about like pulling inwards and focusing on your foundation, your family, your home life, what you want to do in terms of securing your foundation, your roots, etc., and finding a lot of freedom and inspiration in terms of your creativity, what you love to do, you know, your passions, your hobbies, love and romance. So that is kind of what I see for you in a nutshell, but let's get into the tea of it all. So the first really big transit that we have starting in 2023, and this is going to be a huge one for you, Capricorn, is Saturn, your ruling planet, your chart ruler, if you're a Capricorn ascendant, is moving into your third house and out of your second house. So Saturn has been in your second house of income, money, assets, resources, and finances that belong to you, like what you own and your priorities for the last three years. So that's been a very heavy and serious focus for you where you've been really trying to solidify your means, your resources, your assets, your your money, your income. Like you've been really trying to create a very stable and strict foundation here uh, with Saturn moving through Aquarius. So now in 2023 on March 7th, Saturn is moving out of your second house and giving you a little bit more freedom and space financially. And it's moving into your third house. Now the third house is a kind of weird all over the place house of like your environment, your skill set, you know, the different places, people and things that you visit and talk to and frequent on a day to day basis, relatives, cousins, neighbors, and how you kind of, you know, communicate, and interact on a day to day basis. So with Saturn moving into your third house, what I really see here is this could bring more of a 
focus on your environments and the environments that you frequent or belong to. You could get a little bit more serious here or have to for some reason. Um, you may also have a lot more responsibility on a day-to-day -day basis. Like this can maybe look like you, you're moving, but you're like, I don't know, moving far away where like the, the closest store is like a lot of miles up the road. I don't know, but, and it's like distance, you know, um, cause Saturn can play out that way too. So that could be the case for some of you, but not all of you. Um, this could also play out where you're having trouble, like for some reason, like expressing yourself or you're maybe like getting very serious about a new skill or you're like dealing with a lot of restrictions in some way or difficulty in your environment or in your day-to-day -day life for some reason. And so it could be a lot of different things. It's kind of impossible to go through all the variables here, but that's kind of what I see here with this. Now, this is also gonna play out with another massive transit that we have going on. Jupiter is going to be moving into your fifth house in May and out of your fourth house. So for the first few months of 2023, Jupiter is going to be in your fourth house, bringing a lot of potential growth and opportunity in terms of your home life, your family, your personal life, your foundation, real estate, your living situation, like all of these things are going to be, you know, kind of either growing or you're going to be learning about them or you're going to be trying to grow them in some way, or there's going to be opportunity or potential here in some way. So again, this really looks like a lot of you could be moving or doing something with your home, family, and personal life in 2023, um, or considering it or trying to learn about it first. You're kind of like evolving or growing um, into a new arrangement or living situation or environment. With that being said though, then Jupiter is going to move into Taurus on May 17th, which is your fifth house. And Jupiter rules your third house of Pisces where Saturn is. And so these two are really going to be connected with like your local environment and the places and things and, you know, people that are around you and your home life and your passions, your, you know, what you love to do, your dating life, your, you know, hobbies and things like that. And so what I could see here is that you could start getting uh, very serious. Like for some of you, like, I don't know, like the way I kind of see this is like, if you're a content creator, you could start feeling very inspired and having like a lot of creativity, a lot of creative ideas. And you can start getting very serious about sharing them online or like maybe even serious about doing them in public or in your local environment or something like that or spreading something that you're passionate about in your local environment. This could also be like starting something new in your local environment, like starting a group or a class or something like that. I could also see this kind of being like if you do move, like you're kind of adjusting to a new environment and it could be somewhat difficult. It's like you're trying to solidify your ideas and your dreams into reality, but there could be a little bit of a disconnect or um, some difficulty doing that. So hopefully that's making sense for you guys or you have an idea of what I'm talking about here. Uh, if you do, let me know down below because I'd love to hear how this could be playing out for you. And you may not know right now, like it, you know, obviously it's not 2023 yet at the time of filming this and it's not even like Saturn hasn't even moved into Pisces yet. We still have a few months to go, but yeah. So with Jupiter in your fifth, I do see you kind of having seeing a lot more potential in the things that you love and the things that bring you joy and the things that are fun. Um, if you have children, this could be, you know, like there's a lot going on with them. Like they have a lot going on. Like they are growing and evolving or have things that are happening in some way. Like this could also be that you're feeling a lot more free uh, in terms of what you find fun, what you're doing for fun and with dating as well. You could really start like experimenting with dating and dating different types of people and, you know, seeing just, you're seeing a bigger potential uh, when it comes to matters of the heart, basically. And that can be your passions, that can be dating, sexuality, that can be your children, you know, things like that. So anyway, the next really big shift that we have here is the nodes are moving into Aries and Libra. So the first half of 2023, the nodes will still be in Scorpio and Taurus. Again, Taurus is your fifth house where the north node will be the first half of 2023. And Scorpio has been your 11th house where the south node will be. So you've already kind of been getting some of these lessons of like letting go of chaotic relations, uh, chaotic connections, chaotic clicks or circles of people, um, chaotic aspirations, you know, like uh, just any kind of groups or social 
connections you've been involved with that kind of feel chaotic or messy or toxic. It's like you've been kind of getting away from that and you've been kind of more so focused on, you know, what you need to do for you, what's more comfortable, what's going to be more secure, more stable, more pleasurable, what you love and things like that. So you've already kind of had some of those lessons, but then on July 17th, that's going to shift and the focus is going to go uh, like mainly towards your home and family life. Again, like I was kind of saying, like the South Node is going to be in your 10th house of career. So this is going to be about letting go of a lot of bullshit in your career, basically. Like, like a lot of, you know, karmic patterns involving over compromising, trying to keep the peace, trying to be the peacemaker, um, you know, trying to be PR about shit, you know, like trying to deal with the work politics or politics in your career life or politics in terms of, you know, the higher ups or authority figures or whatever. Like it's going to be less about what's going on in the world, what's going on with your career, what's going on with where you're going in life. It's going to be more though about your home, your family, your personal life, your foundation, what's going on behind closed doors, um, focusing more on you, being more independent in terms of your family, your home, and your personal life. Sorry, my hair is just all over the place here, but doing things on a more independent level. Um, you know, maybe you move, but you move by yourself or you move because you want to move, you know, like, or maybe you start spending a lot more time alone on your own, or you move somewhere that makes you feel more independent or you change up your living situation. Um, because you want to feel like it, it fits you more, you know, like this is like Aries is like a self focused sign. And so when it's in your home and family environment, it's like doing what's best for you and whatever is best for you is probably going to be best for your family, you know? So that's kind of what I see with that Capricorn. And then last but not least, we will have Venus going retrograde in Leo in your eighth house on July 22nd. And so you may find that you start feeling this though, like with Venus moving into your eighth house in like June. So from like June to September, you could be noticing some of these themes. So Venus will retrograde in Leo in your eighth house. So during that time frame, you are going to be really reflecting on investments, business, money, income, debt, loans, where you're going with your wealth, where you're going when it comes to like you know, your finances, like where, like where are your finances going? Like, right. And so Venus retrograding in Leo in your eighth house could bring some, you know, dramatic revelations and shifts in what you actually want to do regarding your money and finances. And, you know, maybe it could bring some things from the past back as well, too, that you're reflecting on or dealing with in terms of money, income and finances, taxes, you know, any kind of financial matters that deal with other people or institutions or companies or whatever. Um, and it's like, like the second house is your money and your resources and your priorities. But the eighth house is like, what are you doing with all that? Like, are you building something with all of that? Where is all that going? Like, what are you investing in? Like, you know, who are you sharing it with? Do you have shared resources and finances? And so this is going to definitely be a time where you are kind of rethinking like, um, possibly even like your identity surrounding finances, maybe different creative pursuits that you have going with financial matters or just reflecting on financial matters in general. So that is what I am seeing for you in 2023 Capricorn. Overall, like I said, it seems like you're kind of pulling back from a very outward focused uh, lens and going a little bit more in, focusing more on what's going on in your day-to-day -day life. You know, Saturn in your third could be about that too, where it's like kind of pulling you down to your your own day-to-day -day life and less of being kind of out in the nethers, you know, like focusing on the world, the career, social media, like whatever. It's like kind of pulling you down and saying like right here, right now, what's going on in my environment? You could really kind of be pulling back, you know, like it's like if you've been, you know, kind of world focused, you're kind of like going to be more like here and now focused, right? And so that's kind of what I see for you in 2023. So let me know down below if you could see this resonating for you, if you're Capricorn Ascendant, uh, if this made sense, <laughs> and uh, if you could see some of these things building up already, what you think they could be about for you, make sure to send this to your friends and your family. And if you would like a personal reading with me, or if you would like to support me on Patreon, see the description down below. I love you. And we're going to move on to the next time. Alrighty, Aquarius risings let's get into your 2023 year ahead horoscope so 
For you, Aquarius, Saturn is going to be moving and this is a big fucking deal for you. So March 7th, Saturn is finally going to be moving out of your sign in 2023, where it has been for the last three years, okay? You've been learning Saturn lessons of discipline, difficulty, structure, growing up, maturing, being responsible, you know, like it's possibly felt maybe heavy or burdensome or like a restriction on your personality or who you are, you know, like if who you are has probably went through a lot of really difficult and heavy, serious changes, you know, the last three years. So ever since 2020, Saturn's been moving through your sign where you've really had to grow up a lot. You've had to mature a lot. You've had to learn a lot of really difficult, rough, lessons you know um in life and about who you are and growing up and aging and mortality you know and things like this and so with saturn finally now moving out of your sign in 2023 on march 7th it's going to move into your second house of pisces which is about your resources your income your assets the things that you own your priorities the things that you have for you so this is a time 2023 is going to be the start of you getting very serious with your money, your assets, your income, your priorities, your finances. Like this is going to be a time where you start getting very structured and serious with your priorities. Now, it may not start like this, okay? It usually doesn't start out like that. It starts off with like something happens that where you take on maybe more financial responsibility or there's a situation that comes up that causes you to be more responsible with your money, you know, like where you start kind of thinking long term about like what you want to do, what you want to have, what you want to own, like what you want to have for yourself. Like, do you want financial freedom, financial security? You know, like these are going to be like big questions that you're going to want to start like looking into, you know, you're going to be like really focused on maybe building some kind of financial security for yourself. You're going to be focused on what you have, like, and what's worth it, you know? And so this could really, really start for you in 2023. You could start like having like a lot of like bigger questions surrounding your money, surrounding what you have, what you own, uh, your values, your priorities, like big questions are going to start coming in about these things and uh, possibly some situations that kind of push you into more of a responsible and structured role in terms of your money and making your dreams a reality, right? In terms of Saturn being in your second in Pisces. So that is something really huge I see for you coming in 2023. The next really big thing is that briefly Pluto is going to dip into your sign from March until May, and then it's going to move back into Capricorn. So it from March till May, you could kind of notice a shift uh, in yourself or in your life or something along those lines. So just notice kind of what happens. It's going to be a very short preview. It may not happen all at once. It may be like something subtle or seeds that are being kind of planted for something that's going to start occurring for like the next 20 something years once Pluto really moves into your sign. So you could start noticing some some changes that start happening. You could start like thinking or feeling more deeply about who you are as a person, your identity in some way. You could start wanting to make some big like quantum changes to who you are and how you present yourself, you know. But again, this may not all happen right away. It may be just seeds that start to be planted from March until May in 2023. So the next thing is that Jupiter is going to be in Aries, your third house for the first few months of 2023, and then it's going to move into Taurus, your fourth house. And so, and again, this kind of leads back to what you own, what you have, right? With Saturn moving into your second, this is going to lead into also you know, your environment, the people you're hanging out with, like the places that you're going, you know, with Jupiter in your your third, the first few months of 2023, you're going to have like a lot of potential, a lot of growth, a lot of opportunity, you may be feeling very busy or have a lot of different things going on in your day-to-day -day life and in your reality. But once Jupiter moves into your fourth house on May 17th, this is really going to start connecting dots between like, do you want to own a home someday? You know, like this would be this would be a year where you start really thinking about that. Like, where do you want to settle down? Where do you want your roots to be? Like, you're really, I think, going to start thinking about, like, what do you want to own? What do you want to have for yourself with Saturn in your second? And where do you want to settle down? You know, like, where do you want your home to be? Like, where do you want your family to be? Like, where do you want to focus on your personal life, your private life? Like, where do you want to grow old? Like, you're going to have to start having these, like, bigger life questions about your money, your income, your finances, 
and what you have, like what you own and your home life and your personal life, your family life, like these kinds of things are going to really, really, really be coming up. And I think for a lot of Aquarius risings, it could be coming up due to uh, maybe a relationship or due to just in general, you're feeling like, okay, like I've done all this maturing with Saturn moving through your sign. You know, now I'm ready to like really settle down and like really to have really to like really have the external things in the world that align with who I am now. Right. And so hold on. This is another thing with Jupiter moving into your fourth house, May 17th. Uranus is also there. So you're wanting like freedom. You're wanting like literally like freedom, sovereignty in terms of your home life, in terms of your roots, in terms of your family. So for some of you, this could be like I want to live off grid or I want to own my own home or I want to build my own home or I want to do something different that's going to like literally give me my own sense of security. Like security is going to be a really big keyword, I think, for you, Aquarius Risings in 2023. Like what makes you feel secure? What makes you feel stable? Like where are your roots? Like where's your foundation? Like securing all of that is going to be the name of the game, I think, in 2023. May not seem like that right this second if you're watching this like you know, earlier, but, um, you know, I think like by like halfway through 2023, you're really going to be thinking about these things. Now, the other big thing here is that the nodes are going to be changing signs. So the first like six months of 2023, they're still going to be in Taurus and Scorpio where they've been most of 2022. So you've already kind of had this like inward shift, this shift towards your stability, your security, your home life, your foundation, your family, your past. So you've already kind of been focusing on like being comfortable by yourself, being comfortable indoors, being comfortable in your personal life, being comfortable, you know, in your private life and kind of away from like the chaotic shit in the world, right? Like the South Node's been in Scorpio in your 10th house. So you've been really learning a lot of karmic lessons in terms of the chaotic, messy, you know, shit in the world or with authority figures or with your career or with, you know, whatever's going on outside of your life, you know, like all of that, that's felt really chaotic and messy. It's like, you've been kind of getting away with getting away from that and going more like focusing more on your personal life, focusing more on your home life, your private life, and, you know, feeling a little bit more like, you know, as long as I'm comfortable, you know, behind the scenes, like, I don't care what's happening out there, right? Like, I mean, it's not that you don't care. It's just that, like, what are you going to do about it, right? Like, what are, what can you do about it, basically? And I feel like you've kind of come to some of those similar lessons like that. It may not be the exact same, but you've likely come to some, some of those realizations. So, but the nodes halfway through the year on July 17th, 2023, are going to shift into Aries and Libra, which is your third and ninth house. So, this is going to be a time where you begin to focus a lot more on the here and the now, where you begin to focus a lot more on your environment right here, right now, what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Like you're not going to be focused on what's going on with other people, you know, what's going on in media, politics, you know, like other people's belief systems, what other people believe, what other people think, like school, education, you know, things like that. Like you're not going to be as focused on that or you're going to be learning some lessons, some karmic lessons to do with those things. And you're kind of getting pushed to focus more on your day-to-day -day reality, your day-to-day -day environment, your day-to-day -day life, the here and now what you know, what you have to do, like you're going to be focused more on yourself and your, your like immediate environment. Okay. Being very simple about things, like being very simplistic about things. Like I have to do this, this day and this, that day, like, you know, focusing on your day-to-day -day plans, focusing on your day-to-day -day schedules and things like that. So that is, I mean, you could see a lot of themes of learning, like learning new skills, doing new things, um, you know, learning and teaching and education could still come up and be a, a major thing that you notice, but it's going to be more of like, you know, what you already know or what skills you can acquire. Um, again, it really looks like you are honing in on like what you're capable of, like the skills that you are capable of, like what you own, the talents that you have, securing things, you know, like that really seems like a huge focus for you in 2023 Aquarius. So Last but not least, we will have Venus going retrograde in Leo in your seventh house. Now, you're going to notice these themes from like June until like September-ish. Venus is going to actually go retrograde on July 22nd, but you may get like a preview beforehand. So 
this is going to be interesting because this is your seventh house <laughs> during this time this is going to be a massive massive reflection period on relationships there could be a lot of different people and relationships coming around from the past to be resolved um, old conflicts coming up in relationships to be resolved you may be really reflecting on the relationship that you're in if you're in one this is not a good time to start a relationship or to get back with somebody from the past at least wait till the retrograde is over to do that um because you may not want that <laughs> after the retrograde's over okay so um but this is a time where you're going to be really reflecting on your relationships it's going to be very relationship based and i and like i was kind of saying earlier you're focused very much on yourself in 2023 and what skills you can acquire and what you want to do with your life, how you want to secure your life and create a very solid uh, freedom-based foundation for yourself and secure foundation for yourself to give yourself freedom. Um, but I also feel like, you know, relationships somehow may mix into that with Venus going retrograde in your seventh house okay and also something else i want to say that i just thought of with the north node in your third house this could also be you know something that you're doing where maybe you are expressing yourself a lot more with the north node being in your third house after july 17th like maybe you're expressing yourself a lot more you're getting your thoughts out there you're being more direct and to the point with what you think about things you're not trying to keep the peace or like tiptoe over other people's beliefs and whatever like you're you're being a lot more direct and and honest and blunt about what you want to say and your opinions and things like that so and that's another thing that could come up is like opinions and being very opinionated and like not hesitating to speak your mind like and things like that so that's something else you may notice with 2023 so that is what i'm seeing for you aquarius let me know down below if these things seem like they will be happening for you in 2023 if you could already see some of these things happening i would really really love to hear what you thought about this to hear what resonated to hear what you know, could seem like it would happen. I would love to hear it and make sure to share this with your friends and family, share this on socials. I would really, really appreciate it. And then also if you would like a personal reading with me or to support me on Patreon and to support what I do here, uh, please see the description down below for those links. I love you and we're gonna move on to Pisces. Pisces, darling, welcome to your 2023 year ahead horoscope. So in a nutshell, I see 2023 being a year that you are growing into a way more serious and mature version of yourself. This is gonna be a year where you are really, really, really ready to like be an adult do adult shit, take responsibility, take accountability for shit. And where you're also going to be very, very self-focused. Like this is going to be a year where you are not fucking around when it comes to focusing on yourself, focusing on your money, focusing on your finances, focusing on your income, and no longer trying to play like, you know, this peacemaker with other people, especially in terms of resources and money. And I also feel like you're going to have a lot of creativity, be very opinionated, be able to express yourself in like a lot of really uh, freeing and liberating ways. And so, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the first big thing for you, Pisces, is Saturn is moving from your 12th house where it's been for the last three years where you've had this like massive subconscious burden of really releasing and dealing with like maybe like heavy difficult stuff like heavy difficult endings getting rid of like heavy difficult serious like self-sabotaging behaviors you know like it like dealing with maybe like serious like mental health stuff or feeling very secluded feeling very isolated feeling very different or misunderstood you know like you've really went through like a massive rebirth period the last three years with saturn moving through your 12th and so now this year in march saturn is going to be moving into your first house and this is where you kind of take you know you kind of just ended like a massive cycle with saturn moving through your 12th and now it's kind of like you're kind of growing into this new you. Okay, so Saturn in your first is going to bring a lot of Saturn qualities to your personality. So you may find that you become a little bit more realistic. You may find you become a little bit more mature where you start feeling this energy of like needing to grow up, needing to become more mature, needing to look at things in a more practical way. 
um, maybe being a little bit more detached or distant, you know, focusing on yourself, doing things for yourself, like focusing on your life and what you want out of your life. Like you could also have this feeling of like, you know, life is short. Like that could really start setting in with Saturn in your first, like life is short. Like, what am I doing with my life? Like, what do I want to do with my life? Like these really big questions of like maturing and aging and time could really start coming in and mortality and things like that, where you're like, you know what? Like I haven't been the best to my body or I haven't, I haven't done everything I wanted to do or, you know, things like that. And you really start wanting to make your dreams a reality and you really start needing to take better care of yourself. So this could bring in a lot of responsibility, a lot of discipline and a lot of work that you start putting in towards yourself and your body and your appearance, your identity, your character traits, you know, like you could start really getting serious about these things and wanting to mature and grow up in these areas, you know. Now, on the kind of downside to this, because Saturn is a malefic planet, so I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you and tell you it's all going to be rainbows and butterflies because it's not. Saturn is a malefic and difficult and challenging planet, so it can bring a sense of, you know, possible insecurity. It can kind of show you where you are uh, insecure or where you don't fully embrace who you are or where you're not fully in your power or in your accountability. Um, you could also see where you may try to escape certain things or where you may need to face certain things about yourself, you know? You could also kind of also like have a sense of like, you know, detaching from certain people or situations, etc., cetera, uh, just because it just doesn't align with who you are anymore. And you're just gonna have this general sense of like, life is short, I need to like grow up. I need like, that's what Saturn's trying to get you to do. So if it does feel difficult, if it does feel like, ugh, like I don't even like, it feels like I can't express myself like I usually can, or I'm feeling weird about myself or insecure or something. Saturn is trying to get you to embrace those things about yourself that you may try to hide or that you may try to run from. It's trying to get you to step into your power, to step into adulthood, to be mature about things and to start going about things in a more structured way, right? That's what Saturn is trying to get you to do. It's trying to get you to progress uh, with your identity and with your sense of self. And so your life is going to start having a Saturn lens on it where you're seeing things through a Saturn way more than you normally would, where it's kind of like, you know what, like, I'm not going to feed this bullshit anymore. I'm not going to feed this like pettiness anymore. I'm not going to be involved in these situations anymore. I'm not going to put myself through this kind of thing anymore, like these kinds of things, right? So that is like the first big thing that happens pretty early on March 7th in 2023. The next big thing is that Jupiter is going to be moving into your third house of Taurus, but it's going to be in your second house of Aries for the first few months. So from January until May, Jupiter is going to be in your second house. So it was here a little bit in 2022. So you already experienced some of this, but Jupiter in your second house is bringing in a lot more potential opportunity, growth, and evolution with your finances, your resources, what you own, your assets, what you have a value, what you find value in, what you put value on, and also your priorities. So this is going to be a massive area of life that you're going to see a lot of like open doors, potential growth, opportunity, evolution, learning, things like that in these areas for the first few months. Then Jupiter is going to move into your third house of Taurus, May 17th. And this is going to be a time where your focus is going to be a lot more on learning, a lot more on communicating, expressing your opinion about things, and trying to be in more stable, secure, and comfortable places and environments, basically. Like, you're really trying to focus on the here and now because the South Node has been moving through Scorpio, the opposite sign of Taurus, all of 2022 and will be halfway into 2023 as well. So you've had this massive shift in terms of like the chaos of the world, the chaos of people's beliefs and opinions and, you know, politics, um, the legal system, like, like, you know, news, things like that, like all the chaos going around along in the world. It's like you've kind of had to, you've been learning a lot of karmic lessons about with the South Node moving through your ninth and Scorpio. So the North Node's been moving through your third and will be still up until halfway through 2023. So the first half of 2023, you know, you're still kind of focused on this, but the North Node is pushing you towards 
focusing on your day-to-day -day reality, your day-to-day -day environment, not all the chaos, not all the messiness, not other people's beliefs, not the power dynamics, you know, none of that. It's like, focus, like focus on the here and now, like live life in each moment, you know, focus on the beauty in each moment, find abundance in your environment, like focus on the here and now and, you know, do things that you love more, do things that bring you pleasure more on a day to day basis, you know, like, so Jupiter moving into your third house is going to amplify that even more where you're really focused on the here and now you're finding more joy, more pleasure in the moment, maybe you're honing in on certain skill sets you have, maybe you're learning something new, maybe you're exploring different environments, maybe you're going on short trips, you know, um, you know, after May 17th. So it's going to be, I think, a really beautiful time where you're learning different things, you're exploring different places, you are uh, really kind of focused on your actual realistic life and not, you know, something elsewhere, right? So anyway, uh, on top of that, the next thing that we have is the North Node and the South Node. Uh, is going to be also moving. Like I said, the first part, it's still going to be in Taurus and Scorpio for the first six months. And then July 17th, they are going to move to Aries and Libra, which is your second and eighth house. So there's going to be a massive, massive faded energy shift and direction shift in your life where your focus and certain themes and events <clears throat> are going to start playing out around money and finances massively. Okay. From July 17th, 2023, um, for another like year and a half after that. So what this is about, you know, the North node is going to be in Aries, your second house of your income, your money, your finances, like what you have as a person, as one individual, like what you own, right? Your needs, your values, your priorities, like your shit right? The south node is going to be in Libra in your eighth house, which is stuff that you may have with another person or that you may get or give to another person. This can be loans, debt, taxes, you know, shared finances and resources, investments, business, any kind of transactional financial dynamics or situations with another person, institution, company, bank, etc. So anything like that is going to be like you know, anything involving other people or transactional situations is going to, you're going to start having a lot of karmic lessons, especially to do with where you may compromise too much, where you may be trying to keep the peace, where you may be trying to, um, you know, do too much for others or depend on others too much. You know, anything to do with others is really going to be kind of like, it's going to bring up imbalances. It's going to bring up issues, you know, because it's going to be a time of letting certain things go in those areas. But you're going to be pushed towards being more independent and self-focused in regards to your desires, your needs, your wants, your finances, your money, what you own, your income. Like that's where you're going to be pushed to. So it's going to be more about what you have and less about what we have or what I share with other people or what I get from other people or what I owe to other people. Like you're going to be possibly letting a lot of that go or dealing with certain karmic lessons in those areas because you're like I said kind of being pushed to learn how to do things independently like how to have your own income your own money your own finances like and you may already but how can you be even more independent how can you focus on your own shit even more because that's where the energy is really going to be drawing you uh from July 17th 2023 onward so definitely some things that you could also notice. So last but not least, we're going to have Venus going retrograde in Leo for just a few months. Um, so you could start noticing some of these themes around June and until like September, but Venus is actually going to go like fully retrograde on 20 on July 22nd. Like that's when she'll actually go retrograde. So, but you may notice some of these things happening before then basically. So Venus is going to go retrograde in your sixth house of Leo, which your sixth house is about your work, health, your day-to-day -day routines, responsibilities, and duties, your job, your workplace, your health routines, all of these kinds of things, the tasks and duties and responsibilities that you have and complete on a day-to-day -day basis. So with you having Leo in your sixth house, you know, you like to have fun here in this area of life, in these areas of life. And, you know, you like to have a lot of creativity and find joy in these areas. So Venus going retrograde here could be you really reconsidering like 
you know, are you passionate about your job? Like, are you passionate about what you're doing? Is your routine set up in a way for you to find joy in your day-to-day -day task and duties and responsibilities? You know, like this could be a time where maybe if you've been really busy, it's like you're reflecting on how you've been going about things, what you like to do on a day-to-day -day basis, what actually does bring you joy, your relationships with coworkers or clients or employees, you know, like your, uh, like, you know, what you, what, what you find fulfilling in terms of a job, in terms of your duties, in terms of your health routine, right? Like all of these different kinds of things are going to be focusing on for those few months. So that is basically it, Pisces. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening for you in 2023. I would love, love, love to hear your feedback and it would really mean a lot to me. If you could also uh, share this with your friends and family on social media, that would mean a lot to me too. I would really appreciate it. If you would like a full personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me or if you would like to support me on Patreon, definitely see my description below where the links are. And that is it for this long ass video that's been taking me quite a few days now to film. Uh, so I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so, so much for watching.